just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Some of you may not have even finished last week's episode. Some of you may still be trying to get through the season review. And we're here. We're back again. Obviously brought to you by Bloke Beer. We are currently on special in every bottle in Queensland. On promotion in every bottle in Queensland. So head to your local bottle if they if they've sold out, ask them to order some more in. Currently on special, so get into your local bottle. We're also in every single bottle in New South Wales, plus liquor legends, IJ plus liquor, Porter's liquor, uh, Thirsty Camel, you name it, independent liquor stores, we are in it. If if they're sold out or they don't have any bloke beer, just ask them politely. Could you get some bloke beer in? Because we are um, a part of the big system that delivers to all independent bottle in New South Wales and Queensland. And grab Grab a case of the beer of sport in Australia. No other beer loves sport the way we do. You know this, you know this. Give her a crack, give her a try. We've got a uh, MIDI that we released, I think about a year ago as well, which is really, really, um, people are loving it. People are absolutely loving it. But the great guru, I can't believe you're still alive after a weekend of no NRL rugby league, mate. <laughs> we, uh, we recorded last week's episode about four days early. I feel like I haven't seen you boys in a month. That's very true. That is very true. A lot's happened. New South Wales so. have... What's going on there? Bringing the I, dynasty again. Uh, uh, yeah, bringing in the dynasty. Uh, Timmy, mate, how's your weekend? Awesome, mate. I was back in uh, God's country, Cooma, the uh, heart of the snowy mountains. Had a rolled the arm over, had a game of cricket, back into it, which was good fun. And they just everything went well. The kangaroos were off to a good start. Got the trifecta in the Everest. Uh, wow. Most importantly, they capped it off this morning. Afghanistan knocked off England in the cricket World Cup. So, mate, it's been a ripper. How are you, you know, coping with no AFL over the last couple of weeks? <laughs> Spring racing kind of. <laughs> and the great Hammy, how are you going, brother? How's the weather out there, boys? Uh, got my own throne, finally. Um, good to be here, though. Had a great weekend. Off to the Everest with, uh, with Matty. Had a great day out there, which was good. Um, but, yeah, ready to, ready to rip into a bit. And as you said, uh, Timmy, nothing better than watching England lose uh, to the old foe, Afghanistan, this morning. Um, so uh, off to a great start this week. There's a long, isn't there a long-standing rivalry between uh, England yeah. and Afghanistan? Absolutely. So many, many a close matches, I've heard. Yeah, and uh, the boys towed them up this morning. Only as good as your last game. So <laughs> sucked in England and uh, any English fans watching. Um, that is just... If that's the first thing you're waking up to Monday morning, this is going to be a great week. Oh, a mate, week. especially when we got tailed up recently. Yeah. So it's almost good to deflect from our South Africa. Massively. How do you think Pierce Morgan's going at the moment? Well, he said they won in moral victory. Yeah, moral victory against Afghanistan. He said they're all better blokes, so therefore they won. <laughs> but they're not better blokes, that's the thing. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll be doing it tough today. So thoughts and prayers, uh, Piers, but um, sucked in as well. So. <laughs> he, he's a fan of this show, actually. Piers Morgan, he loves it. He tunes in all the time, messages me all the time. Um, anyway, let's get straight into it, shall we? Let's, let's face the music for some of the decisions we made when we made some predictions out last week. Yeah. International Rugby League. Hey, brought to you by Sportsbet. Hammy, take it away, yep, mate. Let's do it. I'll just hold this up today. There you go. Face the music. That's what we're doing. Um, not a lot of data to assess this week for mm. face the music, but that's fine. Mm. We, still, we still make it work. So I, I asked you all last week or a couple of weeks ago to lock in your Smokies for the squads, for the New Zealand squad, for the Australia squad, and your Golden Boot winner um, as well. So I've only got a couple of things to look at here, but uh, we'll go through it. We'll go through it. So Denon, um, flawless Smokies from you. Absolutely nailed it. Katoni Staggs went for the Aussies. Thank you. And uh, Jermaine Asako for the Kiwis. They're both go. in. There you go. Tick, tick. There you go. Great start to the week Thanks, for you. Mate. Just Appreciate keeps getting better. Yeah. Guru, smoke, the, the term smoky was a little bit loose there with you maybe, but uh, Selwyn Cobbo got picked. <laughs> From the clouds. <laughs> so, what a thunker. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in. Uh, Warbrick though, no, no dice. Um, so you're one from two there. Uh, Timmy. You had Ruben Garrick and Rocco Berry. You went bold, which I, I liked, but... Um, he finally found some fucking... Some metal. I was under the impression that going to Smokey was a bloke unlikely to get picked and come from the clouds, not blokes who were locked into the starting <laughs> seven. Oh, anyway, that's all good, boys. There's a bloke that was picking bloody yeah, first wingers. First picked a winger. Yeah, yeah wingers right. to score. You I'm the one with the tin, aren't <laughs> you? Yeah. You also gave us uh, the tip uh, without a fight in the Turnbull Stakes, which uh, yeah. ended up being a scratching, but um, just worth noting for maybe later in the segment. Yeah, okay. segment. Did... Uh, did come home with gold trip though, 20 to 1 last first. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Didn't get that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to see it, did it happen? No, exactly. Exactly. Good point. Good point. We'll bloody it. claim it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. Matty, you had Ezra Mann. Um, didn't get picked. And then you had uh, Jesse Arthurs. He actually got picked for a different country. So, <laughs> um, 
Some of you to work on there, mate. Just Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then to bring it home myself, I had Dylan Edwards, who eventually got in. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully so. And I had Warbrick as well, so one but, from two for me. But is that is that half a point because nah. like he wasn't initially selected, only brought in through injury? I've actually I've given myself the full point. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's, wow, that's the beauty of this position. You know, you can uh, you can make those calls. So Dylan Edwards got in, did very well. That's a point for me. So I've got two blokes here who are on two points, Timmy and Matty. So what do we do? And they've they've both had indiscretion. So Matty picks on for a different country. Timmy uh, gave us a tip for racehorse. That didn't. That actually got scratched and didn't get up. So Rock, Rocco got picked for New Zealand A. Does that, count? <laughs> did, did that get me across the line? No, I didn't go for the New Zealand A tips. Uh, but uh, anyway, so without a fight, didn't 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 run as well. Denon said, if that wins, two, you're getting two points for that. Um, and as it didn't win, you're going to lose two points. For <laughs> so you know, don't shoot the messenger. So uh, without further ado, you're going to get up and dance for us. Now, you did put in a request before I'd already chosen a song. I'll take that on notice. When's you. your contract with sports bet end? <laughs> <laughs> so you threw a couple of, um, you threw a couple of darts out. So I thought I get for five seconds, you're going to dance to Chase the Sun, which is the song of the darts over in the UK. Love it. Love yeah. it. Here we go. Right, here we go. Timmy the Tin Heart, he's up. Touch. Oh. Where do you want me? Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just adjust the camera. Get it ready. Right, there we go, baby. Beautiful. All right, ready? Touch, pause, engage. <laughs> oh, there we go. Boy, there boy, we go. Boy. But, um, is that the great dodgeball? The dodgeball. <laughs> that is great. Oh, boom, boom. What is it, Dwight? Uh, Dwight Goodman. Dwight, I was going to say. <laughs> no relation. Yeah, do, no yeah. relation, you sure? Yeah, yeah. No. You sure? Yeah, we checked. We checked. But, uh, <laughs> was it, no. The character wasn't based lightly on you? No. No, you're very similar. It looks quite similar to my father, actually. He's got a moustache. Why good one? But, uh, but no, no relation. So uh, there you go. Not a lot of data to assess this week, but we made it work. And, um, and well done, Timmy. Another, another yeah, strong well done, performance. Mate. Well done. Uh, this week, we've got a couple of um, games of footy. We've got some UFC. Mm. We've obviously got the Aussies Ooh. going around tonight, the cricket. Ooh. So no markets up yet for the footy, but I'd love to get from you boys a head-to-head and any time try scorer. And if you want to go a 1 to 12 or a 13 plus with your tip as well. So the first game we have is New Zealand versus uh, Samoa um, this weekend. So who do you like there, B? Okay, for New Zealand, I've got Jermaine Asako to score. And I've got New Zealand winning 13 plus. Like it. Guru? Uh, I'm going to go New Zealand 13 plus and I'm going to take Joey Manu anytime try scorer. Timmy? A lot of shade thrown about from two blokes who just go the two shortest blokes in the market. <laughs> International game, mate. Totally different. Oh. And just to clarify, this is not for New Zealand A. This is yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. So Rocco Berry's out. <laughs> yeah, no Rocco Berry. Uh, mate, I will go with the Kiwis. What have we got? Is there a line there or not? Wouldn't be there yet. Not, not there yet. Uh, I'll go Kiwis 1 to 12. Yep. And Jerome Hughes. Yep. I'm going to go Kiwis 13 plus, Fisher Harris. Like it. Ooh, Ooh. skipper. There we go. He's going bold. Wow. Uh, which we no. love. You know why he's going bold? To excuse his shit tipping. Exactly. So he can just go, oh, <laughs> I went for the fucking, the big, the big bank. And there, it didn't work out. There's some method to his madness. Yeah, there he's is. He's starting to own it a bit. I'll go on Kiwis 1 to 12 and uh, Isaiah Papali'i to score. Ooh. Nice. Uh, for me. Okay. Next game, Fiji, Cook Islands. Are you going to go bold and go um, Sivo or Kempi? <laughs> Oh, mate, the yapping. <laughs> this bloke's been on the wingers all year long, all year long, and yeah. I pick a smoky. Asako wasn't even playing bloody rugby league a year ago. <laughs> now he's a New Zealand side, and he expects him to score a hat-trick. It's he's unbelievable. He's of the uh, New Zealand Oh, Aces. man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to Ruva to score. Uh, anytime. Uh, Fiji versus PNG, correct? Yeah. Uh, there's Cook Islands. There's Cook Islands? Apologies. Uh, Fiji, 13+. plus. Yeah, I'm going to go Fiji 13 plus as well. I'm going to go Tane Milne, who I think will be their lock forward. Ooh. Okay. okay. I will go Fiji 13 plus, Dream Buller. Oh, oh, damn it, that was mine. That's exactly what I had. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to do, so I'll quickly change to... Wong... Mike Siva. Mike Siva. Okay, nice. 13 plus. I, I had that. I can't, I can't just copy and paste. I'm going to go... Uh, Fiji 13 plus and uh, Mr. Whippy. 
anytime <laughs> nice for uh, for mid switch. So let's see. I, I Mike are not out yet, but I'm assuming we'll be getting a nice price for Mr. Whippy, which is good too. Um, all right, then we've got in the UFC this week, and Volk has stepped up at the last minute. I think Ooh. we're going to talk about it a bit later. Oh yeah, uh, against Islam Makachev. Um, I want to head to head. A method of victory and a round, if you got one there as well Ooh. for this one. Sunday morning in Abu Dhabi. This is hard because he hasn't had much preparation. Nah. <clears throat> He's not gonna like although he has kept fit, yep. that's not the same as a full camp yep. for a fight. He also recently had surgery. But I'm gonna go. Volks TKO finish yep. in the fourth. In that's, the fourth. That's what I had. Gonna have to think on my feet here. <laughs> I'm going to go the same, but in the third. Oh, that's what's going on. Back up one. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll go one of the all-time epic fights. I'll go Volk TKO in the fifth. <laughs> I'll just go Volk, Volk on points. Nice. Uh, and I'm going to go Volk. You've backed me into a corner here, boys. Uh, TKO in the second. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hey, yeah, it's Volk. So you, got, you back him in. Absolutely. Back him in. Get around him. Um, and then finally, uh, the cricket tonight, your favourite, Kempi, I mm-hmm. heard your advice to the Aussies the other day. I'm, I'm sure Paddy Cummins will take that on board. I hope he does. Get the boys around all that tonight. I tell you what, the country will be against him if he doesn't, mate. Absolutely. Um, so we've got, I want to get your, your head-to-head winner. We've got Sri Lanka tonight, must-win game. Um, twenty favourites there. Then I want your top run scorer and your top wicket taker just for Australia, just for the Aussies. So uh, you've got the new ball here, Kempi. Um, let me know if, if you need me to walk you through anything, you just let me know. Look, walk through a cricket. You're kidding, mate. You're <laughs> kidding. Fucking. So I've been wearing the fucking. Bit of advice for you, Kempy. Um, Colin Miller is in unreal form. Of <laughs> <laughs> and um, Greg Blewett is also in touch. Opens oh, the bat. Mate. They're probably two top picks. Please, <laughs> mate. I was born on a cricket pitch. Uh, <laughs> Mana Slumbershane. Yep. Most runs. Yep. Six uh, bucks you're getting for him. Paddy Cummins. Most wickets. Nice. Beautiful. Four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, Kempi. I'm impressed. Very good. I'm going to take Steve Smith, most runs. Yep. Um, and I'm going to go uh, Stark, most wickets. Nice. 425 for Smithy and uh, four bucks for Starkey. Mitchie Marsh runs, Adam Zampa wickets. Mitchie Marsh runs? He's due. Yeah, he, he actually well, Like the rest of the team. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go... Glenn Maxwell for wickets. Big shot. Yeah, Ooh. like it. The yeah. 560. Yeah. Yeah, great call, Matty. <laughs> and for runs, I'm going to go Dave Warner. Dave Warner, 375. I'm going Dave Warner as well. 500 plus runs in the IPL. Needs to get going. <laughs> Needs some runs for him now. And Mitchell Stark, I think, has looked the most likely for me. Four bucks. So a bit conservative and obviously the Aussies to win. See how we go. Mate, some great picks there, boys. Didn't know you used a new cricket like that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we should we should change this to a cricket show. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, that's what is that? The grubs? You're all. Hey, this is the grubs kit. Yeah. Uh, we we got to shoot this week with the great Mervyn Gregory Hughes heading down on Wednesday to Melbourne to do a bit of stuff with him. Um, but we're ready to go again for hopefully another big big summer of cricket. Uh, if anyone in Sydney as well needs a pugnacious leg spinner and swashbuckling lower order batsman to fill in at any stage, slide in. I'm, I don't want to play every weekend, but <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a few overs in me if you need me. Okay, so okay, shout out. out. Yeah. If you want the great hammy to join your team, yeah. shout out. You've got to put up with me though for a full day, so that can <laughs> sometimes scares a few people off. But see how we go. Well, that is Space and Music, brought to you by our legend partner, Sportsbet. And any, any new features coming out soon that you can... You can well, there is. I don't know if I can lift the curtain yet. Okay, but, don't lift um, the curtain. Yeah. Is it uh, the same feature that I'm thinking about? It is. At home, very you're, exciting. you're entitled to your, your whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge of it for this feature. You're very excited. <laughs> feature. So, one to look forward to there. Oh, you know all right. Okay, so stay tuned. But obviously, if you're going to have a punt, you do with Sportsbet, the best in the business. Uh, massive thank you to Sportsbet, as always, for partnering with Bloke. Uh, gamble responsibly. You win some and you lose small. Lose more. Lose small. <laughs> you win some. And you lose more. You don't lose small. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into it. And also, for listeners, Hammy's going to stay with us. He's going to stay and talk some sport. You. How good. How good. <laughs> let's get into it. Eh? International Rugby League Australia defeats Samoa 38-12. to 12. Uh, Really interesting game because the first 20 minutes you're going, wow, bloodbath's about to happen. Samoa did show a lot of, I think, grit to hang in this game. Uh, but... I do think it – look, they definitely miss Jerome Luai. Like, you could – if anyone had any doubt as to Jerome Luai's ability <coughs> in a side, 
just watch that Samoa side without uh, Jerome Luai. But in saying that, this Australian side, it's looking pretty bloody good. It's looking pretty bloody good. And seeing Tino Haas and uh, Tino and Haas together is a scary, scary sight that two 23-year-olds are the front row pairing for Australia. And Haas, Tino versus Fisher Harris, Leota in a few weeks is going to be, a couple of weeks, is going to be absolute fireworks. But I am really, really excited for the future of the Kangaroos. That front row pairing, it's just unfair. Oh, it's mate. just simply not fair. That first 20 minutes are, showed how unfair it was. Yeah, just an absolute onslaught. And you know what? Full credit to uh, Sam Mile because you have a look from halftime onwards. I, th- I think it was only like 12 to 6 or something. Yeah. And those boys came back on as well. So mm. I thought Samoa did incredibly well just to <clears throat> stem the bleeding there because it was, I think it was 20 nil after 15. Mm. And yeah. it looked like it could push into like. Well, the first try moments. was a front rower. Yeah. And you're going, uh oh. If a front row is scoring down the middle in the first, you know, five minutes or ten minutes, that's concerning. And then when Tino backed it up five minutes later for their third try, you're just oh. going, good God, this yeah. could get so ugly. Um, but I, I, I just think that, um, I don't know, I like what I'm seeing with Australia. I really think that the World Cup, we li- looked a bit scratchy at times, and I guess it is against a Samoa side without Jerome Luai, but I think that Mali's building something pretty special there in the Australian side. What do you think, Timmy? Yeah, you sort of touched on it, but the first... 20, 25 minutes from Australia, just thought we were going to obliterate them. And off the back of those boys, Hassan Tino, Fasul Malawi, it was, they were almost a cheat code. Like, how do you stop those boys going like that? Um, as you said, Kebby, credit to, to Samoa. When you thought it was going to be a bloodbath, they came out and lost the second half 8-6. Mm. So a good side, Samoa, just just lacking through the spine a little bit. Yeah. And, and it's been like that a little bit in the past. Obviously, you mentioned Luai, such a big loss, but even... <laughs> Stephen Crichton having to play out of position at 5'8", a position that, to my knowledge, he's never played before. Um, some handy enough footballs around him in the spine, but just <coughs> lacking experience there and probably hurt him a little bit. But, yeah, a good early signs for the Kangaroos. I will say, a bloke stole the show, and I assume he is going to play for Samoa for the rest of his career. I could be wrong, but I assume he is. Far long off. Holy, I mean, we did say watch him and we've been singing his praises before he even made his debut. I remember reacting to his highlights maybe this year or late, late, late last year. Um, I remember hearing about him early last year about this kid that was just electric on his foot, um, footwork. But to see him do that against an Australian pack, <laughs> the guy is going to absolutely tear the NRL apart. What do you think? You know, I thought watching him, that chip and chase particularly, I just thought this bloke would be a great fit at the Tigers. Um, <laughs> Get him over there. Get him in there. Uh, you're, already, you're already off your man, Buller. No, keep them both. Get them <laughs> both in there. Get them both out there. Both both quality players. But uh, he just tore it up every time he had yeah. the ball. So exciting. Mm. Um, <clears throat> such a shame they took. I mean, surely the, the bunker could have a bit of a sense of occasion there and just go, you know what? We're going to let that one go. Just through let, the keeper. Let him have through it. Through the keeper of it. Cricket. Exactly. That's the good. greatest try that never was. Yeah. <laughs> it was elite. So it was good. so good. And for a guy that young. And also what I loved about his game is that it wasn't easy. He didn't just the game didn't just open up for him. And at the end, he oh, sorry during the game he got some line breaks. And from the get go, it was a you know almost like snowballing into that incredible moment. No, he was getting bashed the first half. He got no barely any meters. Obviously, he was breaking a fair few tackles. But for the first twenty to even thirty minutes, maybe even first whole half, relatively speaking to what we saw in the second half, it was just a really good safe fullback performance. And then the second half is when it all, it didn't even open up for him yet. He created himself. Mate, his highlight reel by the end of his career, it, it, it reminded me the closest, I mean, obviously you've got Campbell, um, you know, at the Titans, but it was the closest to Preston Campbell that I'd seen. Just the, the, uh, the way he could move, like in small spaces as quickly as he did, it is shockingly fast, shockingly fast. And I'm going to put him up there right now. I think he will finish with the greatest goosey we've ever seen. The greatest goosey? He's going to become your favourite very oh, quickly. Hang on, see, I thought that's mine to give away. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to start giving away. Could be anything. <laughs> I reckon he could be anything. <laughs> um, mate, it, it was – and you talk about a guy that's going to put bums on seat. And what's, <clears throat> what's really exciting for Samoa is that, look, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Suali'i's situation, but let's, like, fingers crossed he stays in the NRL. Not that there's been any noise of that, but I hope he does. When you get a full strength Samoa side together, all of a sudden you go, holy shit, this is a very, very strong side. Um, Wouldn't it be great just to see at some point a different NRL club other than Melbourne have too many fullbacks yeah. to deal oh, with? Oh, man. It is like their ability to. Like, I would love to. Is it Bellamy that's picking these guys coming through the grade? Like, who is the scout 
He just must he must know fullbacks inside out. <laughs> well, the beauty about uh, um, Sura as well, he's actually a Victorian junior. Mm, he's yeah. come all the way through down there. Well, so. He's only the ever fifth Victorian junior, yeah. I think, to play. Or well, not even junior, Victorian person. Like yeah, joins Warner. the greats of Mahe Fanua and... A few others. You ended up at the Tigers, so maybe it's the pathway. You go to Melbourne, <laughs> Storm, and then you end up at the Tigers, have a great career. Might, might, might have been a Scotty Woodward job there, mate. One of the great uh, NRL recruitment managers in the game. Little unsung hero. Oh, Scotty. really? Yeah. Okay, so is Paul Bunn still there as well? No idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. So that, that recruitment team is just seriously the Young blokes in the... Working in the juniors too, he does a bit of recruitment. Jordan, oh, really? So, yeah. Okay. There yeah. was um, there's a bit of footage there with 13 minutes to go. Game basically dead and buried. And he's at the back of the scrum and there's forwards out of place and he's sitting there screaming at him, telling him where to go. He was going off his off his lid at him. And yep. that for a young bloke in his first test was such a good sign because there are so many terrific footballers, but communication is such a major part, especially for a fullback in the game. There's there's some good fullbacks out there starting number mm. ones who don't talk. And yeah. It's arguably the biggest part of their job. Something that we've said before on the show that you don't probably see too often. Now, it's a small clip and I don't know what he's like through an 80-minute game, but for him to come into this side with senior players who have been there and done it all and he's screaming I at them. I reckon that's a good real sign. good evidence of the Melbourne Storm system, mm. that they just wouldn't allow him to get to that spot close to playing fullback for them. Um, and there's two, two things I reckon that is Billy Slater's most underrated weapons. It was his fitness, repeat speed, uh, fitness there's also his talk and defense like that anyone that's played with him says he does not it's like a coach on the field uh and, and like obviously billy slater working with all the young guys coming through at the storm um and to see a guy with that much talent and and you know to be honest and you know i don't want to speak for everyone but in my experience a lot of young polynesian boys coming through and and girls but young polynesian boys coming through struggle with that side because they're they're you know to my understanding, their culture is all about respecting your elders, you know, not, not um, putting yourself out there. It's almost shame to do that. And so the, a lot of these younger guys coming through now are being told, no, it's okay, you can do that. And when we, we see it with a guy like Fa Longo, it's going to set him up for, I mean, an incredible career, an incredible career. Yeah, have a look at, you know, your, your fullback this season, Reese Walsh, and how incredible he was. For me, the turning point was he got to spend six weeks with Billy Slater. Mm. This guy gets to spend pre-season after pre-season with Billy. It's terrifying where yeah. he could land. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anyone else? Hammy, what do you think of a far long loss performance? Yeah, it just killed it. Just so exciting every time he touched the footy. Um, he was, uh, yeah, just, he's going to be so, as you mentioned, to spend all that time with Billy Slater. He's going to be a freak. Um, shades of Billy Slater's 05 Origin try with the chip and chase as well. So he's already Ooh, got all the, all the like little that. ingredients. I like um, that. Cam Murray, uh, for me, which is one I met that I noticed. Vossi said on comms, I don't know whether maybe, Guru, you can verify with your infinite knowledge of the game. Cam Murray apparently has now scored in five straight test matches for Australia. Is that the case? Uh, I didn't know that at the time either, but yeah. I wouldn't put anything past Cam Murray. I'll tell you who would probably know. Our resident rabbit down there. With no you mic. don't have a mic. Good. No mic. Good throw there. <laughs> I mean, Cam Murray on an edge. I, I like Cam Murray on an edge. I've, I've never understood why he doesn't get played there. If you're not going to play him at lock for New South Wales, I never understood why he doesn't play there um, more often because he played there the year before, uh, a couple of years before, sorry, and he did a job on David Feeder mm. up in Townsville. And so I was so shocked that this year he was getting brought off the bench. It was like, no, Cam Murray is so good. He needs to be on the field for as many minutes as possible. You can't be bringing him off the bench and starting a game without him in it. Um, yeah, so, mate, the, the Australian side, <clears throat> I think what let him down was their completion rate towards the end there. First 20 minutes, they almost completed at 100% nearly. And then they started dropping the ball and obviously invited the uh, Samoa side back into it. But let's talk about first the Samoa side. Actually, we'll go Australia side first. Um, now, I just want to quickly talk about it. I saw a lot of people saying Dylan Edwards played really poorly. And I was like, he made one error. Like, what, what are we talking about here? He, he played terribly. He made one error. And he also ran for the most metres of any uh, winger on the field. So he had 17 hit-ups, 168 metres, four tackle breaks, 60 post contact. Um, it compared to Selwyn Cobo, 144, and then you go on the Samoa side with uh, Tua Lungi and To'o, it was 129, To'o 119. 
in, de- in defence of the critics, one error is a bad game for Dylan Edwards yeah. because he's never made an error. <laughs> Maybe well, that's the last why. Four years anyway. But I, I just couldn't believe the yarns I was seeing. Like he'd had this absolute Barry Crocker. I'm like, what the hell are we watching here? Just because he made a single error, all of a sudden it's a bad game. He, he from the wing ran for more meters than Cobbo, Tuolangi, and Toto. Like, what are we talking about here? Bizarre, absolutely bizarre. What do you reckon? Garrett? Yeah, completely agree. I think uh, I almost fell off my chair when he knocked that ball on. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> yeah, and the way it happened too. The way it happened, yeah. It wasn't yeah. even like impact or anything. It was just almost a loose yeah. carry. I know. I just think it shows, you know, the high standard we have for Dillard was now and the expectations we have of him. Uh, but yeah, as you said, Kemby, those stats, you know, 168 run readers, 59 post contact, four tackle breaks. If you tell me a debutant winger has that game without the name next to it, you're saying well done. Or, or if he played wing at club. But it's because he's gone from fullback to wing that everyone's like almost angry that he took another person's wing spot. It's super strange, super strange. I thought he was all right. What do you, what do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, I thought he was fine. And the biggest thing for me was just that we knew he was always going to sort of do a job in attack. You know, he'll get his opportunities throughout, throughout the tournament to finish and he'll, he'll rack up his run metres. But just defensively, playing out of position, he did a job there. I know there wasn't a tremendous amount thrown at him, but held his own there and that, that was the most important thing. Well, I mean, you know, I, I thought Selwyn Cobbo was actually the one that looked, he looked a bit not engaged with the game. Uh, there was a few moments where he got lucky that certain things didn't bounce, um, uh, like almost bounced his way rather than the other way. And I think Mel, uh, Mel Manning has also been quoted saying he might be under a bit of pressure to keep his spot next game. Um, so going to be interesting to see what they do with Selwyn Cobbo. Is it a bit that from Selwyn Cobbo in the, in the grand finals or maybe I thought there was a couple of he does it. He does it. He does it regularly. Yeah. Like not regularly, sorry. He has these patches where... He'll have like a few games where you just like he just loses the concentration and and then sometimes it gets covered over by this incredible play at the end yep. of the game where you go oh my god he just won us the game so it's all good like for example the grand final there were a few moments where that happened obviously when he was bringing the ball out and he just dropped it cold but then he has these incredible catches in defence and you go oh okay well he just did that amazing thing and that, that's where I think that we're just kind of seeing his youth to a degree I don't think this Selwyn Cobo will be the same Selwyn Cobo we see in three or four years. And once he rounds that out, geez, like once he fully rounds himself out, holy shit, he's going to be a player. I thought the moment that really summed it up was when he threw the pass to James Tedesco. Mm. Like you could just tell it was, it was just very lacklustre sort yep. of going through the motions. And uh, yeah, it's a, it is bizarre how he has that in his game. But I, I like, even when I was watching the other night, like he just, he's just reminded of how young and how raw yeah. he is. Yeah. Like he is just, he's got so much ahead of him. And he, I think he's going to be part of the kangaroo system. For a very long time, and you know, you probably want him to have some of those moments. Cause well, I think it's good. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think it's good he's had the moments, but I think it's good that he's a part of the system because yeah. it'll be like a guy like Mal saying, "Mate, this, this, and this." It's only going to be good for his game. And and it's good that he doesn't have two tries at the end of this game to go, "Oh well, fuck it." Yeah, it's yes. good. This, this is what he's got to work on. This is what he's got to focus on. And once he does. My God, we're going to have a football. Well, all, all his focus needs is just concentration. Yeah. Like, it's not a skill thing. It's not an effort thing. He, he has heaps of ticker. He's tough as anything. He's talented as anything. It's just staying concentrated for 80 minutes. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess from the Australian side, we'll talk about it. But Payne Haas and Tino. Just, but Payne Haas specifically. And then we'll speak about Tino. But, like... At 23 years old, he's now won the Broncos Player of the Year, I think, five times in a row. <laughs> he is Dally M front rower four times in a row now, I think, in NRL. So basically, I think he surpasses Glenn Lazarus and Shane Webke. Um, he's obviously been in a grand final. Although they didn't win, his performance in the grand final was nothing short of absolutely incredible. This guy is just 23. We've got we've got a decade more, a decade more. It is bizarre how good he's going to get. And I think that what we're starting to see, especially this season, especially the second half of the season, he's starting to almost – obviously he believed in his ability before, but I think that now he's getting to a point where he honestly feels every time he runs the ball, he might break the line. That's what it looks like. like every time he runs the ball, he may create a try-scoring opportunity – it's honestly scary to see where he can get. You've got to remember as well, like he debuted in 2018. He played three games of footy, which meant that he could win Rookie of the Year in 2019, which he did. Mm. Uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, that's five seasons. As you said, he's won Brisbane's Player of the Year. This is the Brisbane Broncos to win yeah. Player of the Year. He's not a fullback. He's not a halfback. He's a front, he's a front row forward. Like, And especially, I, I think front row forward, and we look at you know James Fischer, for example, because he set such a high standard, 
but he's a front row forward and, you know, like we don't have all the highlights. Sometimes you just go, oh, yeah, we're used to that. Isaiah Yeo's another guy. Mm. This guy just keeps on going up and up and up and up. Yeah. And it, it's unbelievable what he's managed to do. And, like, on top of that, across those five seasons, the least <coughs> amount of games he's played is 17. That was in 2020 when it was a 20-week comp. Oh. Like, the brutality he's putting his body through, and he plays 20-plus games every single year. Now he's playing Origins. Now he's playing World Cups, Test Matches. He's a genetic freak. It is in, and a guy that big to be that durable mm. is unbelievable. Yeah, what's exciting with him is that he's, you know, arguably the best forward in front row in the world at the moment, and he's done for so many years. He's very calculated in what he does. Mm. Like, he's a pretty high percentage player. There aren't many stray offloads in his game, even... He threw an offload for a try, for the Cam Murray try. Mm. And he had a few chances to throw that, and he waited and waited and waited. It wasn't until the very end where they were just falling off and where it was like, okay, I'm completely free here. There's no one else around. He popped it, and they made a line break off and ended up scoring. But just to see, like I said, after five seasons of dominance already at 23 years old is how his game's going to develop in coming years. Because I think you're right, Kempi, in that you see this confidence building in him across the final series, and in particular on the weekend against Samoa, he just looks so confident. He's going, I'm just going to belt you blokes to pieces. And as his career goes on, he's going to do things like, similar to Jason Taumalolo in some ways, but different in others, where Taumalolo developed his ball playing. And I don't mean his big like lock ball playing, big pass out of that, mm. but just his little tip-ons at the line. Yeah. Maybe starts throwing a few more offloads because he's so dominant and mm. just seeing where this bloke can get to. Oh, I, I think he's also getting really smart. Uh, we know he can do the tough stuff. We know he can run straight at the biggest bloke mm. in the field. There's no question of Payne Hass's mm. toughness. But he's also getting smart where he's going, oh, there's a halfback over there. I'm going to run mm. overs into that little fella Instead of, you know, when you're younger and you're beating your chest, you're like, I don't run at halfbacks. I only run at front rowers. And we love that from Payne. That's why, you know, it's part of rugby league, that toughness. But if he now he's getting a bit selective with where he runs. That's the scary part that creates all this momentum for him. Because he instead of going, all right, I'm going to run at the toughest bloke in the field every run, he's going, I'll do that twice. And then every time I see, you know, a center, a wide running forward, a halfback, I'm just going to angle off straight into him. And that's why we're seeing so much space around him now, because he's selecting his, his running... Um, lines just better and better every single game. The only thing to watch with Payne Haas, obviously a proud New South Welshman. Uh, <laughs> he's played 11 games for New South Wales. He's 23. Brad Fittler holds a record at 31. Wow. He's already at 11 and he's 23 years old. And you'd have to assume he's almost guaranteed to be well, playing. Well, he's hardly ever injured. Yeah. He's going to be there. Like, you have a look at the, the next best front row forward <laughs> is Paul Gallen, who played half his career at 13 yeah. for New South Wales. But he's at 24 games. He's almost halfway there. And I, I tell you what, if you go back to this series and you actually look at what Payne Haas did, it was friggin' amazing. He just ne – no one spoke about it. Mm. And it, I think it is because he's Payne Haas. But if another front rower did the numbers he was doing, like I think it was the most tackles, I think no misses, maybe one miss, and the most metres for a forward uh, in a beaten um, – for a front rower in a beaten side. Like he was phenomenal this Origin series. I, I think as well when it comes to New South Wales, you also need to take into consideration that he is the best front row forward in our team. Mm. So you've just got a pack of wolves that go after him. Yeah. They know if they can stop him, you stop a lot of New South Wales momentum, same as the Broncos, same yep. as every team this guy is in. And I'm sure Samoa would have gone into that game and gone, hey, it'd be good if we could stop Payne Haas. They weren't able to. Well, I mean, look at Penrith. They would have been like, we, we yep. stopped Payne, we stopped the whole team. And they, they managed to for maybe 20 minutes when the Broncos kept dropping the ball. But then he just exploded. And this is not to say that, you know, Leota and Fish Harris didn't ultimately win the battle because they won the game and that's all that matters. But... By no means did anyone watch that grand final and go, oh, yeah, Payne Ass was kept quiet. Like, no, no way. Um, what do you reckon, I mean, about the big, the big the fella? The big fella, well, I just, the first try of the game, he obviously scored mm. that, overcame a bit of adversity. They'd uh, pulled his pants down and he had his backside on full display. <laughs> and you could just hear Vossi's eyes light up in the commentary box. Uh, gave us a little bit of, uh, you know, <coughs> showing us a bit of a crack in the defence there. Bit of arse based humour. Uh, there was really something for everyone, for all the fans up there at uh, North Queensland Stadium on the weekend. And I was very impressed with his performance. Haas showed his Haas. He did. Big time. <laughs> that was one of my best. You like that one, boys? <laughs> no, not bad. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Now, onto our other boy, the big fella. You know what, like, for me, very rarely do I, you know, watch a footy game and almost like capture a. You know when you see something on the screen, you almost capture that and remember it for a while? Yeah. Very rarely, because you watch so much rugby league. But when I saw Payne, Haas and Tino with their comeback on cards standing next to each other, and, Payne, and Tino's like this, just a little bit taller, 
I was just like, this is nothing. This is incredible. Like these guys are 23 <clears throat> years old, and we, we forget they almost punched on a couple of years ago. Yeah. Wish that had come to fruition. Um, but anyway, let's talk about Tino. What I love about these rep games for Tino is it gets to remind everyone that this guy is the tippity top of our best players in our game. Sometimes if you play for a, the Titans that struggle, and I actually think they're getting, going to get better next year, but they've been struggling for a while now. I think Brimo's been cursed with this a little bit, and he got to go to Origin and show how good he was. I think what's really good for Tino is, is that when he gets into these rep environments, he goes, oh, look how good this guy is. Like, this guy is not just good at the Titans. He's not a, a big fish in a small pond. No, no, he's a big fish. And when he gets to bigger ponds, he's just as big as the other guys. I thought Tino was outstanding. Yeah, I'm really hoping the Titans can start to turn it around. Like, God, I would love to see Tino under the bright lights playing, like, proper finals footy because yeah. he just goes to another level. And you're right, mate. Like, when they were both standing on the side, I, th- I think Matty said it. Via text the other night. Thank God they play for different states. Oh, mm. fuck. Or it just wouldn't be sweet. Like, it w- could you imagine them both lining up into the same state? It would be almost impossible to stop mm. the roll on they'd get. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, and I, what I love it, with, with Fatino is it's like, so he played 45 minutes. He doesn't have to slog out 70 minutes. And then by the time he gets into the 70th minute, he's worked his ass off. So he's fallen off tackles or he might have a little error here or there. He gets to come in and just play footy. Just play footy the way he enjoys it. The other thing I was thinking about with Tino, like when we're talking about the Melbourne Storm all this year, what did we say? They're just missing that one oh. court. Like imagine if they would have kept a hold of him. Well, they tried to get him back. Shock me. And the word, Try every year for the next decade. The so. word I heard was it was a massive offer. Yeah. Like I'm talking monster. Like very unstorm like kind of stuff. Wow. And, it, and he decided because he – like this is, this is the kind of guy that's getting offered – like, what is the, the age-old saying? Take unders, go to Melbourne. Take unders, go to Melbourne. This guy's getting offered monster contracts. Basically saying, if you come down here on this long-term contract, you're almost guaranteeing yourself another premiership. Mm-hmm. He's going, no, nah, I'll stay in Gold Coast for, to my understanding, relatively same money. So it's not even like the <coughs> Titans blew anyone out of the water. He's so keen on taking the Titans to the next level that he goes, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to stay on the Gold Coast and, and finish the job that I started a few years Not ago. Not to mention that obviously down there in Melbourne, like, there's Queensland Maroons coaches there. Yeah. There's every reason to go down there. It'll be yeah. interesting to see, like, if Melbourne, and I'm sure they will, knowing Craig Billman, but if, you know, we're talking in two years' time and they still haven't filled that hole in their pack, losing Tino could be one of the big whiffs in Melbourne Storm history. Really, it really could. And it, he, uh, Cam Smith actually brought it to my attention that, like, I think we're speaking about Nelson or whatever. When you actually sit down and look at it, there's not many big boys like Tino, like Haas, like Nelson, just rolling around the NRL. Yeah. Like we've got, you've got plenty of big front rollers. And when we say big, we're saying in the context of rugby league, like six foot three isn't big these days. Um, but there's not many guys that have the like physical attributes of Tino, Payne, Nelson. I'm trying to think of another big bopper like that. You feel like there's a lot of them. But there isn't. There really isn't. Yeah. You feel like, oh, everyone, every every club has their big enforcer. That's a, that's the feeling you get. And every club does have their big bopper front rolls, but not like this. And, mm. and I even think, like, like I, I'm sure a lot of people would put, like, um, Adam Vanilla Blake in that conversation as yeah, well. Yeah, he'd be in there, yeah. He'd be up there, but, man, I would still have Tino and Payne a level of love. Physically, there's physically. Just their athleticism, there's mm. just something about them that they can play 80 minutes, they can just do it all. It's well, the motor. It's the, it's yeah, it's the motor. Because yeah. no, no. that's the thing, Adam, what, what is so impressive about Adam Vanilla Blake and why he is one of the best front rowers in the competition, he's almost doing what he's doing in spite of his body shape. Mm. You know, he, he's not that big, tall, rangy front rower that, you know, seems to have footwork. He's a bit thicker and yet he's got this mad left foot step, mad right foot step, he can ball play. <sighs> And that's what makes Adam so great. Whereas a guy like Tino and Payne Haas, it's almost expected that they dominate the way they do because of their physical presence. Um, but that, that's the irony is that what makes Payne and Tino so great is how many times have we seen big fellas and they're soft mentally. Yeah. These guys are fucking hard as nails. Well, that's a scary thing. Like you look at, you know, the front row forwards that have come through the last 15 years, the standard was set by Webke and Seven Receiver and everyone's been chasing that. <laughs> Now people have been able to chase that. And now this new standard has been set by these guys. Like, can you imagine in 20, 30 years' time if we're talking about a new pair of front row forwards, you oh. go, they might be better than Payne and Tino. Like, they're just going to have to be off their heads. Yeah. And they will be. That's the way the game yeah. develops and mm. changes. It's terrifying. <laughs> Honestly, eventually we'll probably get to a point where across the board they're all pretty much six foot three, yep. 100 kilos. Yeah, like ev- every forward plus. is... Tino's yeah. well, I, re- I honestly and reckon across the board, except for maybe halves, yeah. maybe fullback, everyone is 100 kilos and six foot three. 
Like, I reckon it'll get to that point. Because, like, look at the wingers now. Mm. Yeah. The wingers would be front rowers back in the day. Like, if the wingers of today <laughs> were playing in 1980s, they would be in the front row. They wouldn't yeah. be sitting on the wing. For sure. Um, so, yeah, Tino, I'm so happy that he gets to, I guess, shine on the, on the big stage. Um, ironically, ironically, both Samoa and Her- Heritage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Samoa. Thanks, boys. We'll take um, him. I'll take, well, hey, we'll take him. Bit of chat about it wasn't uh, potentially even Payne saying for the time being he's, he See, would do I, Australia. I didn't. Did he, was it quoted? Could you get that up, please, Matty? I don't know if he was actually quoted. I think the report just said him and Nelson. Yep. Had Nas was quoted. Nas was quoted. Yep. So I don't know if Payne was quoted, but boys, you're Australian now. Yep. Come in. Please stay. Please stay. <laughs> stay. That's good seeing as well, generational talent, obviously, but a generational mullet in an Australian jersey as well. <laughs> he's got the best hair just to be out in the comp and just to see it flapping in the breeze at full speed. It's, you know what? It's so true. It's good, isn't it? It is beautiful. Yeah. And it is, it's almost, it should be heritage listed. It should be. <laughs> Fucking that mullet yeah. just flying in the wind. Holy heckers. Uh, and he's a good sort too, which doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, outside of that, I thought Munster had a mixed back because I did think there were moments where I was like, he looks really energetic. He looks like he's in the game. Um, DC, I thought watching watching DCE though, like he could have not done anything in attack. But if you wanted to see how important a good kicking game is, watch DCE's game on the weekend. Like when you compared that to Sam O's kicking game, it was like honestly, it was like not even like I wouldn't. I don't want to be disrespectful to Sam O, but it was not close. Yeah. It was not close the kicking game, and that's like. I think it's one of the most under. Well, look, we appreciate it because we know how good Cleary is, but I don't. Even, I don't know if we appreciate it enough how good a very high IQ, high quality kicking game is. Because like that, that was you could genuinely see it at the end of every set when when DC got the ball, he was putting it exactly where he needed to be. And you know, and as you said, you don't want to be disrespectful to uh, um, the Samoa and halves there, but DC does it in Origin too. Mm, mm. Goes up against Nath Cleary, and the kicking game just elevates him to a new yeah. level. Like. And it's not like he can kick <coughs> longer or even more accurate than than uh, Cleary. It's just his choice of kicks it's and like where he yeah. decides to put it. I don't um, know why, but like I've I've almost enjoyed DC this year more than e- ever before. Mm. I, I guess just because of his, his age and his footy has just hit. Maybe not new heights, but to still be as good as he was during his prime age-wise, I suppose. Just little things like he just knows how to get the best out of everyone around him. Yeah. Even just very basic little shit like getting Katoni Staggs early ball yeah. off the back of a good play of the ball where not overplaying his hand and going, all right, Katoni, one-on-one here, he'll do a job. Let's mm. get it to him. Don't overthink it. Again, it's a catch, it's a pass. There's nothing in it, but... He's just so smart. He yeah. understands the game so well. He is. We spoke about how much rep footy has helped Tino. DCE's career looks so different if mm. he doesn't do what he does in rep footy. Matter of fact, if he doesn't do what he does in rep <coughs> footy, mm. there'd be huge pressure on him at Clubland because you'd go, okay, you've been at Manly for how many years now? You signed this long-term deal. We haven't even been really close to a premiership in the last, let's just say, decade. We'll just give or take. But because he goes away and kills it at Repland, it's like clearly he's not the problem. Like clearly the problem at Manly is not based around DCE. Whereas imagine if he didn't have Rep. Imagine if for some reason we had this other gun seven that just, you know, took that spot. You know, he'd, he'd almost be pulling, his, well, he's barely got any hair left, but he'd be pulling his hair out because he'd be going, it, I am not the problem, but like the results aren't really showing for me. I think it's a really fair argument. DCE for me is, a Queensland legend now. Mm. I pull, think he's got his own legacy. To pull the Maroons out of, you know, when you think four or five immortals just disappeared overnight or over a year or two, and then DCE came in with a side that he had in 2020 and did what he did and going up against, you know, like we, we, we were all talking about that we could look back at Nathan Cleary as one of the greatest of all time, and it's DCE who's managed to trump him the first few years of his origin career. Mm. Like, I think DCE has to be put right up there on a pedestal. If for nothing else, just the timing of what he's done for Queensland during yeah. this period. Yeah, I think that the the really, like, obviously he's not in the same, you know, uh, conversations as, as the Queensland greats. But I think the key for DC is he's stepped out of the shadow of them, which is like, I don't think people are ever going to appreciate how hard that is to have come through the same time as those immortals, essentially, and then take the reins when you're basically at the end of your career and take us to what? So since 2020, we've won what? Three. Three? 2020. Three. 23. Because he's won 18, 19? Yep. And then DC, so Cam Smith retired 17, Slater 18? 
Yes, yep. And so he had it 19. So basically he's had 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and he's got, what, three from... Five? Three from five. A 60% win rate. Can I word it even better? Yep. For sure you Queensland, they lost four or five immortals. Mm. DCE came in and handled the job. We lost one immortal 20 fucking years ago and we still haven't recovered from it. That's a good point. That's a good point. We are still trying to recover from losing <clears throat> Freddie and Joey. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think also your point about he's... And look, it's, it's fair that he has taken it too clearly at origin level because of his experience. Mm. And if you ever needed an idea of how important experience is, go and watch Origin, DC versus Cleary. Like, we can all agree Cleary is a better player. Like, yeah. Like, I think everyone agrees that. But he doesn't have the experience that DC does. So when, when the little percents matter, those little decisions that Cleary will get, and I think that we're... Look, I will be shocked if Cleary doesn't have his Origin Series in the next three years. If Cleary doesn't dominate an Origin in the next three years, I will be shocked. And what's crazy, he'll still only be 28 by then. Um, yeah, so he's got plenty of time. But DCE, because of his experience, has been out of... Like, put it this way, what's bizarre is right now, let's say Cleary retired, DCE retired. As a starting seven, I think um, DCE has only won one extra series than Cleary, yet you would say Cleary has a substantially better... Sorry, not Cleary. DC has a substantially better rep footy resume or performances than Cleary. Um, now, by the end of his career, I do think we'll be looking back at Cleary going, mate, remember, you know, remember the 2025 series or the 26 and the 20s, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, DC, he, his ability to just like his control of a game. It's almost close to Cam Smith. Well, I wouldn't say it's close, but Cam Smith was so good because to the naked eye, you didn't even know he was on the field sometimes. So if you were just a casual fan, you, were, you wouldn't even know who the number nine was. Whereas it's similar to DC, to the naked eye, it's like, what did he even do? When you go back and you look at the stats and you go, where were the big moments? And like, DC is nowhere to be found. But when you're watching it, you go, geez, he has this game under control. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, there'd be a lot of people that would say, oh, you know, there's other Queensland legends that could have done what DC did. And sure, maybe. But he actually did it. He actually did it. He went and did it. And also, let's not, let's not forget the place the Queensland side was in a couple of years ago, we had legends of the game saying they were worried about Queensland Rugby League and that mm. most of New South Wales thought we were about to enter a dynasty, as in New South Wales were about to enter a dynasty. We had guys like 2020, I know we all speak about it all the time, but like there were reserve graders in that side. Like, like we're not talking about a guy that walked into, you know, it's not like a seven or a six walking into the Penrith squad right now comparatively speaking, it's a seven walking into a, a Queensland that's almost looks like it's about to have this um, post-immortal depression to a degree. You want to say something? Yeah, well, that's where the I reckon he's probably got the edge on. Clearly, the origin stuff at the moment is because they've won series when they were not the favourites. They weren't mm. expected to win. New South Wales have probably been a little bit more stacked in recent years. Like, so many stars in their team haven't won. That's where he's got the edge, I reckon, yeah. and made that that kind of legacy. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah. like, I mean, that's that's what you say. We always say about Joey with um, Newcastle. Don't get me wrong; he still had some really good players. But that was the key thing: is, is like he wasn't didn't have this fully stacked outside to get the premierships that he got. You know what I love too, Kempi? I just had a look at the odds for State of Origin next year. We're the underdogs. Dollar ninety five. Wow. About time. The battlers. It's about bloody time. Wow! You guys are finally seeing the light. You're finally admitting that we get yeah. Origin. Is that what's no, happening? No, we aren't. He is. Oh, you're admitting. Has Sportsbet admitted finally that Queensland get origin? For, for the time being, it looks like it. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, like, I think that's more population thing. Like more New South Welshmen, so you have that natural bias to think that your state's going to win, so more bets would go on. We just Wales. fucking hate you. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's what Jeez, it is. Guru, it's, it's bloody six months away, mate. <laughs> Doesn't matter. A bit longer. <laughs> Holy heck. So, uh, speaking of halfbacks, um, obviously DC was fantastic, mate. The more I watch Ben Hunt, I don't get what anyone says. He's a hooker that's playing half back in the NRL. Mate, how good was he? He's a nine. He's unbelievable. He is, and like, he's another guy. A club land, he'd be going every game going, oh, shit, <laughs> it sucks. And then he goes up to Australia, he'd be going, this is the best. <laughs> this is the best. I just got these guns all around me. Like, he had two tries from uh, number nine. There was one of those tries, if you watch it again, he gets the ball dummy half and he's looking around and DC was a little bit unorganised. DC just sort of went, oh, I don't know. So he just looked up, just... Yeah, controlled the rock probe. completely, gave it to Tino, put him over. It was, it's just too easy for him. Mm, he's, he's, yeah. I, 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 he's a fantastic halfback, don't get me wrong, but I think he's such a better nine. Yeah, I, I, he's just so good. 
And I, again, another reminder of just the quality that he that he is. If yeah. started people because of everything that's going on in the Dragons, if they started to go, you know what, is he really worth this? You know, fuss. Even though I still think that they should release him, but is he worth the fuss that we're all putting around it? I mean, I think he is. I think he is worth the fuss. Is. Done. Um, who stood out for you, Timmy? I mean, from the other side, both the centres, Tony Stars was tremendous, particularly his goal kicking. Um, but the hammer, Tabio Fido, and look, fuck. I'm happy to let you boys talk about his attack because I just every time he plays and plays in my eyes out of position at centre as a bloke who was sceptical of him, Origin won this year, playing at centre and whether he could do a job defensively. Same thing, like, again, not saying there's a tremendous amount thrown in, but 14 tackles without a miss. He might be the best defensive centre in the comp. <laughs> like, him, maybe him and Critter, but he might be the best this, defensive centre. This small sample size is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. Has he missed a tackle in his career at centre? Mate, wasn't it like 40 tackles in Origin, one miss? <clears throat> yeah. oh. So at rep level, he's probably sitting at about 50-plus tackles and one or two misses yeah. at rep level. Yeah, and it, you know what? The day will come where he'll make a bad read or he'll do mm. something, and you'd want to hope you're five metres out because he's going to run you down yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, that try where he was kind of like – like what people don't understand about that try is he was playing with the defence, um, changing his speed and momentum to make them think that they had enough space. So, so for example, as he's – you know he, you know, makes the, the break or the semi-break and he sees that gap, you can see him almost slow down a bit to give the defence the uh, illusion that they can cover that space. Like, people don't understand how smart that is and how naturally gifted – not naturally, because you have to be intelligent here too – but how footy smart you've got to be to go, okay, I've got enough space around me where no one can tackle me. I'll slow my pace a bit to give them illusion that they can cover that space if they need to and then just fucking hit the afterburners. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. The rugby league nerds like me out there will appreciate this. I saw almost the exact same try I scored at the SFS one night. Remember um, Nathan Gardner? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Sharks fullback? He yeah. scored almost the exact same yeah. try and did the same thing. Slowed down. Paul Braithen Astry had him on ice skates that yeah. night. He let him catch up to him and then went at another pace. I mean, so <laughs> Val Holmes still isn't in this side. I could not possibly move Hammer out of left centre. What... Um was Val, has he had another game of suspension to serve? Is that what happened? I think so, he's so. Got, so this is this counts as one, and right. I think he can be back. Next game. Next game. I, I personally wouldn't take either out. I thought Stags was outstanding. I'd slot Val in on the wing. On the, the wing. Oh, yeah. on the wing. Yeah, for good sure. Call. Great call. I was just talking more about <laughs> centre. Mm. Those two, I thought our two centres were two, two of our best players. On the wing, though, yeah, for sure. I'd slot him in. Sure. Stags had 15 runs for 195 metres. Mate, he was it's outstanding. So, so on like Hammer's defence... This isn't a knock on Starks because there are no bad misses, but like Starks is noted as one of the, the more beastly, stronger defenders in the NRL who's played centre for years and years, mm. his whole career, as far as I'm, I can remember. You know, 12 tackles with four misses. Yeah. Missed a third of them. I know. Hammer on the other side misses none. none. And more tackles. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer for me is just like when you go when you go from club footy to rep footy because there's so many better players around and you really like how good he is actually comes through even more. Yeah. Like he tears it up for the Dolphins, obviously, but. Um, just, I don't know, he's so exciting. The, the length of the field try really stands out. So he's, um, he's one of those players now, like, if he's playing, you, just, you go to watch, really. Yeah. You, know, um, you know, it's insane too. Like, you have a look at Hamiso. Like, for me, he will be my left centre for the Kangaroos for a long time to come. Yeah. And there will be arguments that he, despite not playing centre at club league, <coughs> could be the best centre in rugby league. And then they're going to also have Herbie in that side at left centre. Yeah. They might have the two <sighs> best left centres in rugby league. Yeah. What I love about, well, I, I mean, it's not something I love, but it's it's what's really interesting about Hammer is like, whatever level he plays at, he just plays a little bit better. Yep. Like it's it's almost like at Clubland he goes, okay, I'm just going to do what I need to do to tear this game apart, and then he'll get to Origin and go, you know what, I'm just going to do what I need to do to tear this game apart, and maybe it's a <laughs> it's almost an illusion that he creates because even when he's at top speed, it doesn't look like he's straining to be a top speed. So it's like, you still got more in you, but maybe he does and he just naturally... I actually reacted to Hamiso um, years ago now. Fuck, you'd be talking like four years ago. Uh, and he's almost exactly the same. Like, you can well, go back and look at tries. Yeah, that like, he'll play... She'll play fullback for the Dolphins next year. Surely. I think so he'll So we could be looking at one of the all-time... Like, I won't say breakout year because we, you know, he's playing for Australia now and killing it. However... Like two years ago at the Cowboys, he was coming off the bench in limited stints, in limited minutes. This year at the Dolphins, a new squad put together that the roster had enormous question marks over it. Mm. Goes fullback, 
next year for the Dolphins with new faces coming in. They've had a season together, another preseason together. They should be vastly improved. He he could like he's got Dalian potential in him at fullback form. He could be could be anything, mate. He could be anything. <laughs> Pick a fullback to build a team around Hamiso or Drinky. Oh, that is a tough one. That is a tough one. I mean, what in in Hamiso's benefit, he could play fullback, centre, wing, maybe six at a pinch if you could train. It. I mean, look, I don't put anything past you him. You could pick worse sixes. Yeah. Oh, maybe the hammer only because I've seen him at the tippity top dominate. Mm. Whereas I don't know what Drinky would do. I, look, he probably would dominate. I mean, I think Drinky right now for New South Wales. If you're not going to put Hines at fullback, he's probably the front runner for fullback <coughs> for New South Wales right Thanks, now. Yeah. yeah. Like, unless Teddy comes out and kills it again, obviously, Teddy... Like, people that say Teddy are just, is just done, I don't agree with that. I think he's a champion fullback. He can easily fight his way back into form. Um, but, yeah, Drinky's probably front runner at the moment for New South Wales to work. How do you feel about that, Guru? No, I still think Teddy will be there. Teddy? For the Blues? Yeah. Who's front runner for fullback right now? Right now, Teddy, because he's the Kangaroos fullback. And the thing about Teddy is... <coughs> You know, getting a lot of knocks for the year that he's had and whether or not he should still be the Kangaroos fullback. I don't think he should. I, I would have had mm. Reese Walsh or Caelan Ponga back there. But that's not to say that Teddy isn't still an absolute elite fullback in the NRL. He's just got these two freaks who, in my opinion, have now surpassed him. You know, he's older in, in his career. These two blokes have come through and are unbelievable. Uh, at a Blues level, as I said, if, you, if you're the Kangaroos fullback, he played well on the weekend. He's at this stage, he's probably our number one. Mm. But I, you know, I'm not convinced. I would if, have him there. If he goes in with some patchy form, club form next year before it all kicks off, do you reckon Madge could put a bit of a stamp on things? And go right, absolutely. We're going to go with some other well. guys here and and mix it up. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, it it almost, I guess. It puts Madge in a good position because he can be like, look, I'm just starting afresh. Mm. So it gives him an easier way to say, <laughs> oh, the only reason I don't, it's not because of Teddy's ability. Like I, I you know, Teddy's ability is still a top three fullback. Mm. Like there's no denying that. It's more just the style of play. I just don't know. The way that we've seen, you know, Reese Walsh and Kalen Ponga, the way they can create space with their ball playing, I just wonder whether that's what's needed in this this version of Origin is, is a really good ball playing fullback. Um, and I, look, I, I'm not counting Teddy out at all. I'm not counting it at all. I truly believe he can get back in that spot because we know he can ball play. But even on the weekend, there were a few times where I was like, Teddy, like, just. There's a time where he took a scoot down the short side because I think he saw um, Tungle maybe injured. And I was like, oh, like, you've got so many guns. You don't need to make that big play. Like, just leave it for the guys around you to get, get field position. And, and the other big if there is that, without getting too, too far ahead of ourselves, talking about the internationals, but I know this is an enormous if, but if, you know, if Teddy starts slow and Tommy Turbo comes back and plays the first 12, 13 rounds and stays fit, we're talking about drink water, Tom Trebojevic at number one. Yeah, that's oh. a good point. And then, oh. like, centres can be a number of options. We've got a ton. Yep. Campbell Graham, Tony Staggs. Latrell. Um, Latrell Mitchell, like. Yeah, mate. It's, uh, anyway, not never too soon for Origin chat. <laughs> <Never laughs> um, Cam Murray, I thought, obviously, great on the edge there. Um, who else stood out for you, boys? Cam Murray was great. Uh, I thought Isaiah Yo had a really good game as well. Uh, mate, I thought that uh, as much as they weren't as big as the two starting front rowers, Lindsay Collins and Pat Carrigan, the amount of work they got through in a short amount of time they were on the field. Lindsay was on for 35 minutes and made 35 tackles. <laughs> Carrigan was on for 35 minutes. He ran for 120 metres and made 28 tackles. Yeah. I didn't even notice them. I know. Right. They, they just, just fucking rip and tear, yeah. eh? They just rip and tear. Shout out to Ruben Cotter too. Played a test match and then got married the next day. I know. <laughs> At 20 nil, I'm going, surely they just don't put Ruben on, right? Yeah. Surely you just keep him sweet for his wedding. <laughs> Still went on and played 30 minutes. Hey, tell you what, that's pretty masculine if you ask me. Playing for your bloody country then getting married the next day. Who Looking says like that too. Who says fucking the most blokey blokes of all blokes don't love love? Hey, Hammy. Exactly. He's bloody playing for his country, getting married. That's a bloke that loves love. I've, I've always said that. Exactly. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to his now wife as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I didn't get an invite, which was strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you basically made his career. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. Good. Okay. Uh, anyone else stand out you, you guys for the, the kangaroos? Uh, pretty well sorted, uh, mate. The, right. the, the really tough thing when speaking about this is, you know, we're all really excited and we're really happy with the way they played and... <clears throat> 
I tell you what, it was good seeing Nico Hines at number 18. Anyway, um, but I just want to see him against, like, yeah. a New Zealand because, you know, all due respect to Samoa, they didn't play their best game of rugby league. But they're, let's also, talk- they're also missing a number of players Yeah, Samoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about uh, Samoa. We've already spoken about Fa'a Longo. Uh, who stood out for you, boys? Tough game. I just didn't have much ball, did they, early? I, I, I thought the hooker was good, Chan Kum Tong. Mm. Thought he looks really solid. He's got a big future. Uh, Palliasi, I feel like I've spoken about him every week for the last 15 weeks on the trot. He looks good as well. Uh, and Terrell May, I thought, when he was on the pitch too, went good. Geez, you'd be locking him in if you're the Roosters. 42 minutes, 123 metres, 19 tackles without a miss in a side that was pumped. Yeah. That's some serious numbers. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if... The Roosters aren't already in the negotiation. Oh. I mean, think about how many teams could use a big front rower like that like, with imagine, an offload. Imagine if the Melbourne Storm were to sign yeah. him this off-season. We're having a completely different well, conversation. About I him. heard whispers that the Melbourne Storm did try to get him, but he didn't want to move to Melbourne. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. So the, the, when I hear all this, I'm like, the Melbourne Storm are clearly aggressively in the market because they've tried to get a couple guys and they just has, it just <coughs> hasn't landed yet. That, that Roosters side next year... Keep in mind, they're going to have him and Spencer Lenu coming off the bench. You must be excited as a Roosters fan. So excited. <laughs> Very excited. The red, white and blue stars. <laughs> um, just quickly, a little bit concerned about Tungor's body. He was not sweet the he other night. He didn't seem sweet. Yeah. We saw in the grand final, uh, sorry. Was prelim. It the prelim. We saw that tackle miss and then there was a rolled, I don't know whether it was a rolled ankle or whatever. Also, he was taken off in the grand final, to my understanding. And so, it's he, to my understanding, he was taken off in the grand final because of injury. And then two weeks later, he's playing for Samoa. And then he gets a little niggle injury there. I don't know. I'm just a little bit concerned about his body and the fact that he's had so many different kind of niggling injuries over a 12-month period. And also, look, I understand why clubs don't release the information because it's like... You know, it's their private information again. But, like, it's very vague when it comes out that he's, you know, he's still working on an ankle injury or this injury. It's always very vague coming out of Penrith, so it's hard to see where he's at physically. But I, I hope that it's not a something that repeats itself next year because we saw it was only this year where he went against Melbourne and it absolutely destroyed them, destroyed them. Um, I thought, you know, as always, Junior Polo, he just – he's a beast, man. Like, he doesn't – regardless of how his team's going, he just – Rips and tears. Doesn't matter how dominant the other forward pack is. Doesn't matter how, whether, even if he's going not that well, he just does not quit. He does not quit. Yeah, he's, he's such a good leader too. Yeah. I love Junior. Uh, Luchan Lua came oh. up with his annual, how the fuck did you do that Mate, play? Mate, what a that, grubber. Like kick down the short side. And, you know, like I, 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 I had someone in my comments go, oh, bloody Selwyn Cobber. I'm like, bro, I don't know who could have stopped that. Could have been GI on that sting wouldn't have yeah. stopped that. Like it was just perfect. It like, was a perfect kick in like unless he stuck his leg out maybe and it's like look, that's just one of those ones where you've got to chalk it up to just It's a great play. It's a great play. Damn. If if Cobbo like stays back <coughs> half a meter preempting a kick, yeah. The winger falls over yeah. the line over the top of him. But Luciano the whole game, I, I thought he was definitely the standout for me from the, the deft touch of that kick. Just other little things though, like the try that he scored for a big bollocking back rower, he threw a really nice pass out the back earlier in that play. Mm. And then just to follow up in support play to score the try, he looked really dangerous and just his all round game, I thought he was terrific. Yeah, played 80 minutes as well, try and assist against <coughs> the Kangaroos. Another one from the West Tigers uh, footy nursery <laughs> that we bloody let go. So that's good. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought he was I thought he was very good. T- yeah. Timmy mentioned on that play, he threw a nice pass and one that we didn't mention with uh, Far Longo as well, just a little tap on mm, yeah. that pace, yep. such a nice touch. Yeah. Um, Leilua, he's basically, I thought he was one of the Cowboys most consistent this year. Uh, actually, I'd go as far as to say Probably their best forward this year. Yeah, one, 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 he, he missed the first half of the season, so he yeah. came back fresh. But when he did, when he did, he got he had an impact. Yeah, I because I'm trying to think of another forward at the club that played as well as he they like he did as consistently as he did for you know 10, 15 plus games. Mm. He probably was their best forward, and he was different to what he'd done sort of in the past, and particularly at the Tigers. Like he'd been you know quite a flashy back rower. He had mm. plenty of like fancy offloads and yep. ball playing and all that. He just got through the hard yards at the cows this year, didn't he? Mm. It's actually amazing. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but like when he was coming through Toyota Cup and stuff at the Dragons, 
he was like Bryce Cartwright, just offloads yeah. and shit everywhere. And he, but he, he would never do the tough stuff. Yeah. He'd just always come up with these mm. amazing plays and offloads <laughs> and everything. And he is just, it's interesting. Like, uh, uh, for, for me, it was a guy like Madge that really changed him, mm. really gave him that hardened edge. And, you know, he's continued on. Well, it's weird because he left whilst Madge was still coach, correct? Uh, yeah, to, yeah, right towards the end. Yep. So I don't know what happened there because... I don't know what happened either, but yeah. he, under Madge, he changed. Yeah. Oh, he definitely, yep. the fresh start, everything. But the fact that he left whilst being under Madge was really surprising. I wonder what, what's gone on there because then they had to go out and frigging buy two back rollers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I must think it might not have been a Madge thing. Though. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, thoughts on credit at six. Look, I didn't think he played poorly, but I think he was just there out of, um, like, what other option did they have? Yeah, and I, I saw a lot of comments online. Well, mm. that'll never work. It's like, fuck, he's going up against the best team you yeah. could assemble. Like, playing out of position, he's got Assi at halfback, who I think is a centre. Like, <laughs> he's, he's got a kid playing hooker who's played one game of first grade. Like, it's pretty He's got a, pretty a tough fullback that's played <laughs> half a game. Yeah. He's also not a 5'8". Yeah. He's yeah. just a gun footballer. And he's got to jump in at 5'8". Yeah. It, it was a real shame because, like, another big stage game for, for Critter and, you know, you want to see him at centre. His best position. Yeah. He's at five eight. Like you saw, he was shot out of line and caught out for that first pay and house try. That gap opened up. But like you know, he's moved one position in the defensive line. But you know, people should never underestimate how different that defensive position Way is. Different. So I felt sorry for him. And look, it wasn't his best game. And there are a few defensive issues. But freaking as there should be when you move out of position. Yeah. For what you and also should, against the kangaroos. Against the kangaroos yeah. that are essentially like who are they missing through injury? Like maybe a couple outside backs. If that, yeah, and much. it's also like look at the people that replace them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I look, it was a recipe for disaster for mm. for the the people that wanted to hate on Critter. They were already ready to go, yeah. like they were all ready yeah. to go. And for most people watching, though, like look, <coughs> the reason why he's been moved to six is who the hell else would you put yeah. there? Would you rather have a New South Wales Cup player that you know? We don't know how he's going to go at all, and then that that means if we don't if we don't have if we brought a New South Wales Cup to play six, we've essentially got no established general player in our spine. How's that going to go? Pretty fucking bad. And this is the reality of international footy. Like this happens sometimes. Like yeah. yeah like I remember Tohu Harris playing five eight for New Zealand. Yeah. I, I remember we we went over for a test match against the USA in like the early two thousands. I remember we we had Mick Crocker playing five eight in one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the great Mick Crocker. Was it um. Was it Luai and Milf in the halves in the World Cup? Yeah, I think it eventually. So Luai and Milf, Milf but didn't Milf get dropped for a game? Injured, or dropped. Yeah, I don't think Milf finished in that. Who, who played in, in the side. Who played in the halves with Luai? And in then the Luai got moved to seven, and there was a young, maybe a young half. I can't believe I'm forgetting. Yeah, I, I'll say. But anyway, who's on the job anyway? We're getting it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure Milf at, at one point got dropped. He definitely. I don't know if he played the World Cup. Maybe off the benches in the World Cup final. Anyway. Well, could you check that Actually, one? it was Anthony Milford was the halfback in the game. Who was the game before, before that? Six. Game before I swear that, there was a game where Milf didn't play. Or maybe he got taken off. Might have got taken off. The game before that, the halves were Milford and Lua. Really? Got taken off. Mm. I don't know. <coughs> oh, Chanel Harris-DeVita was on the bench. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe in the pool games it was Chanel Harris-DeVita. Yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense. So I wonder, okay, so he probably wouldn't have been ready yet, even though he's come Mil back. It'll be a good little win for them to get him back yeah, as well. Yeah, fucking Oath of all. Him yeah. and... Him and so will, will, will Milf be back next game or not? Why was he out? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe he wants a break. Yeah, I don't know if he's in the squad. Yeah, I don't think he's... Mm. I didn't see him. Um, Actually, he's definitely not in the squad, yeah, because they, they okay. picked Carl Oluwapu and he got yeah, pulled out. Yeah, right, yeah. Because you'd think, like, again, yeah, not the Milf, because exactly had like, the greatest year of all time, but, but if it better. meant keeping Critter at centre and that, in that side, for sure. Yeah. I uh, actually didn't mind um, Dion Arcee. Look, he didn't, you know, have a knockout game or anything and, and a few defensive things here and there. But you mentioned Guru, you think he's a centre. I like him in the halves. I like the way he plays deep mm. in the line. He squares up mm. really well. I I think he's got a really big future and, and mm. I, I can't wait to see, hopefully, a bit more footy under his belt next year. I actually think his best position could be fullback. Yeah, right. The way okay. that he plays. But he needs a club to pick him and give him a position and leave him there. And unfortunately... He's almost too good at so many things mm. that I think he's never really going to be able to lock down a proper position. Yeah. Hopefully I'm wrong though. Uh, I thought Palacia was really good. I know you've already spoken about yeah. him, but I just think I think that Titans four pack next year is so exciting. Fafida, Tino, Palacia, Fonawaka. Both back in. Like both or more. Like, it's exciting at the, the Titans. Like That is a high, high quality forward pack and they're all relatively young as well. Um, so yeah, really exciting there. 
But yeah, look, Samoa, I thought, although this score is 38-12, that's probably where they are as squads anyway. Like, so it's not like, like, it looks like a massive win, but it probably should be a massive win. Like, look at the different squads. Sure. Like, look at the standard of play. So I actually think Samoa, the fact that they lo- lost by so much in that first 20 minutes, the, their ability to fight back into the game, I thought they showed a lot of grit and it shows a lot of good signs moving forward. I thought we were heading for a 60. Yeah, I, I did too. Doubt. said 8-6 second half to the Kangaroos. Yeah. So yeah. There's a lot of ticker. Really, really good. Uh, PNG versus Cook Islands. Uh, PNG, I thought they looked really, really good. Really good. I actually think this PNG would give Samoa a lot of troubles. Um, I personally think PNG are the next team that could surprise a few people in the next few years. Just some of their like attacking sets, they look like a genuine NRL side. Mm. And of course they're going to look like that because they've got starting to get at the very least good pathways. They've obviously got the new, uh, Queensland Cup side. Um, yeah, I thought uh, they looked really good and I thought Lamb was outstanding. Yeah, he's a good football lamb. Mm. Um, I'd love to see him back in the NRL. I, I, we were talking pre-show. I, I, I thought there was a chance he was coming back next year, but it looks like he has re-signed with Lee. Uh, but, geez, I, oh, so many teams are good deal oh, with having him, I think. He looks sharp as anything. Oh. See him at his halves partner as well, Kyle Labor. I, I'm getting really sick of us watching PG going, he should be in a side somewhere. And he's or at least in a squad. Shot. Yeah. It's, but it's really strange that he can't get in the top 30 anywhere. Anywhere. It's bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his brother, Zach, he obviously scored a try. He was good. He, uh, I think he'll be a starting centre for the Cows next year. I think he's one to watch. I just With Zach, I like the fact that he just <clears> seems <throat> to be there yep. in the right spot at the right time. And a lot of people don't appreciate that there's a knack to that. There's a skill to just being at the right spot at the right time. I, he also had a try assist as well. I, I loved his try assist. Mm, yeah. Just the the tip on. Yep. You know, yeah. Very minor sort of thing. But yeah, he, saw, he scored a couple of tries. Didn't do a heap for them, but... We know he's got a good running game. Looks yeah. so awkward to tackle, bit of speed, quite strong. But uh, and like, haven't seen a lot of his ball playing. But what makes an elite centre in my mm. eyes? Bunch of things. But the, the difference between sort of the tier one and the tier two says he's just that tip on at the yeah. line, and he's one for the try in the league. Who was class? Another guy, Nene McDonald, mate. There was a period when he was playing NRL where he was one of the best wingers in the comp, like form wise. There was a period where he was one, of, and then obviously everything that happened and all the off field stuff. Like, surely he could find his way into a... You know, and maybe it's off-field stuff. Maybe he struggles to really commit. But four tries and looking dangerous all the time. 214 metres, 66 post-contact, five tackle breaks, two line breaks. Like, he, really one of those players who go, damn, I wish certain things, had certain decisions he could have made earlier in his career to stay in the game a bit longer. Because, like, he was a freak when he was playing first grade most of the time. Yeah, for sure. And he's just it, – it, it has to be off field. Mm. It has to be because he's just too talented. Not to. You ever look at last year, he was playing for Lee, Centurions. He scored 27 tries in 27 games. <laughs> Mate. Like, he's, he's a freak now. No, he's just never quite been able to put it all together, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Who, who stood out for you, PNG side? Well, I was going to say, <clears throat> no, no, four tries. Anytime you see that, I mean – Gee whiz, he'd look good in the Tigers jersey. We'll take him. Anyone who can score four tries <laughs> in any form, I don't care what, what form of footy is it, we'll, we'll take him. Okay. Um, Tupu did it for you this year. How'd that go? Yeah, didn't go that well. Turned out all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got, we've got to keep moving forward, though. It's, I can't afford to look we back. We need another four Cannot try winger. Bloody hell, you've recruited three freaking outside backs. It's this, just this episode. Yeah, well, we, we need a bit more strike power. So <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, Nay Nay definitely the, the uh, one that stood out for me. There's a decent try as well for the Cook Islands. A little bit of a fluky one to kick through um, Ioka mm. uh, right in the corner there. That was that was cool. a good, good little moment there, Magic. upside down. I thought uh, the number nine, Rimbu. Yeah, he's good. He's good. 40 tackles, zero misses. That's the stat I like to see in the middle there. Fuck Just on uh, Nay Nay McDonald, but before we move on, something interesting. Like He hasn't played 100 games of NRL. He's played 97. Played for five clubs in that 97. Mm. I'd be shocked if there's anyone else that's played less than 100 and played for five different NRL clubs. Yeah, wow. So, like, I mean, I guess all the, the clubs were like us. Like, there's such a gun here. Yeah. And it just didn't seem to work didn't out. Quite, yeah. Um, yeah, number nine, good. Look, I mean, it's hard really to talk because a lot of these guys aren't in the NRL. I will say, I thought uh, number eight, the way he moves, again, get him in an NRL system. I, I'm not sure whether he wants to commit to that. I, I don't know what his you know deal is, but his physicality and his footwork for how big he is. Mm. Um, another guy, when you look at it statistically, like didn't you know didn't uh, set the world alight, but I'd really like the look of Jacob Alec and the way he moves. I think that he's actually 
gift may be his curse where because he is so good laterally and because he's so mobile for a big man, he may rely on that too heavily. I reckon if he can get in early in his game and go, you know what, I'm going to 10 hard and straight carries, <coughs> if he can get that sorted early, fuck, he can do whatever he wants. He's, uh, he's with the Gold Coast Titans. He's just re-signed for 2024. Mm. Uh He's, if I was an NRL club, he'd be one I'd be trying to get because he's probably not going to get into that Titans pack, realistically. Mm. Uh, Arlett can play. He, he's, he's a guy that I'd be targeting. Maybe Who's he play Cucar? Tigers. Bert? <coughs> What's that? Does he play Bears, Cucar? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know, he, he reminds me a lot of um, who, you know, funnily enough, wasn't in this PNG side, Reese Martin. Yeah, okay. Reminds me a lot of him, the way yeah. that he plays. And he's probably a bit bigger than Reese Martin as well. I think he's well. a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really like the way he moves, and as I said, like he's just got to make sure that he doesn't constantly be, you know, skipping overs or looking a step, and just going, you know, what ten runs hard and fast, and then the rest of it I can have a bit of fun. Well, I'm just trying to find the stats. He he made his debut this year for the Titans, and I think he came on. He played about 30 minutes, and he got through a stack of work. I'm just getting his numbers up here from his first game. Um, yeah, sorry, he, he came off the bench. He played 60 minutes. Uh, he had one line break. Three tackle breaks, two offloads, uh, and made 34 tackles and ran for 108 cool. metres. Fuck, that's good for a rookie. <laughs> yeah. That's good for you a rookie. You mentioned the um, hooker there in Rimbu. I, I quite liked Horn came off the bench in that sort of hooking rotation and, and had a good impact on the field as well. Bit of a production line of, of number nines coming out of PNG. Obviously, Seguiaro back in the day, an absolute star. But a bloke we spoke a lot about off the back of the World Cup last year, and that was Edwin Epape. Yeah. Hopefully pronounced it right. What's he but, doing now? Mate, you'll love this. Again, Lee Leopard. So oh, with Lockie remember, Lamb at number yeah. nine, Super League Dream Team this year. Got in the team of the really? season. Really? Because I remember, I think it was the World it. Cup, we were saying, mate, NRL yeah, club get that. It. And he couldn't get a release from yeah. Lee. And and better yet, he like Lee were nearly promoted back up into the Super League this year. And so Lamb killed it. He Lockie Lamb was in Dream Team as well. My puppy was in it. Obviously, Adrian Lamb, Lamb is coaching it. Um, so he wasn't even there in the side on the weekend. So, geez, they can produce a number nine. Yeah, wow. Little yeah. shout out to the king of Papua New Guinea nines, Paul Aton. <laughs> yeah. He was picked in every team for about 15 years. <laughs> hey, geez, they can produce a nine. Yeah, absolutely. It's because they're so tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's such a tough position. <laughs> it's such a tough position. Wow, I, I like, I love that. I mean, look, if I'm in an NRL club, I'm watching Lee closely. Absolutely. Oh. You're trying to get your fingers on him. Imagine him in a full first grade preseason, oh. what you could make that beast into. He yeah. would fucking dominate. Um, Cook Island uh, side uh, Look, I thought uh, Davy Morley did some good stuff um, But they just never seemed to really click as a team Just couldn't get out of their own way Yeah, yeah. Just so many errors And every time you felt like a set was building to something You could put money on a third or fourth drop ball in that tackle it was, it was, I've, I found it really frustrating to watch Because they've got players in that side that can really play They just weren't able to get through sets Yeah, I mean, what was it? Ended up completion rate 58% completion. Good God. Yeah. That's just like, that's not skill. That's not skill. That's just like not concentrating at all. Like not even close. So who went well, I thought Pride Patterson Rabati got through 50 tackles in that guy. I can help. He's another one that, you know, his name's been thrown around for a while. He hasn't quite kicked on just yet, but I think he's got potential. Still Broncos or Titans? I think he's at Brisbane. He was, uh, I know he was at Brizzy. Yeah. 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 Um, good to see Brad Takarangi back out there. Especially when the halfback went down. Like, we, we were at, he, he was at the grand final luncheon the other day for retiring mm. players. And he's a huge human. No, he's a big boy, eh? He's big. Yeah, I know. You don't like, realise how big he is. Like he was standing next to, like, James Tamo and I think Dan Alvaro was there. And he was a giant compared to them. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so, look, not much to say with the... With the um, the, the Cook Islands, but some really, really good players in the PNG side. So uh, hopefully the Cook Islands can get it together. If they, if they could just get, it's tough. They've got no resources, you know, all that. If they could just somehow get some uh, training together and just complete at an 80%, you know, completion <coughs> rate, give themselves a chance. They didn't give themselves a chance on the weekend. 58%, holy. Shout out to their coach too, one of my favourites, Carmichael Hunt. Good old game. I'd love to see him be successful. Yeah, hopefully coach. he can stay there for a longer period of time because this is his first time coaching. Yeah. So hopefully that's the start of some great – because he was coach of the year for Q South Logan. Yeah. Uh, in Q Cup, which is fucking not that's bad. Awesome. Good night. Bloody yeah. really good. Uh, 
anyway, that's international footy done and dusted. Uh, now, NRL news. I uh, just want to say, you know, send a massive shout out to Nathan Merritt's uh, family and friends. He's woken up from his coma, remains in hospital with the care of doctors and nurses. So, I just wanted to send our best wishes to to Nathan, our family and friends. Uh, definitely in our thoughts. Now, Panthers have reportedly actually. Let's get the biggest news. Biggest news: Michael Maguire named head coach of the New South Wales side. Uh, he's currently Kiwis head coach, currently assistant head coach at the Raiders. Boys, as New South Welshman, what do you reckon? Uh, I don't hate it. Um, I just, the only thing that worries me about Madge is that I just, if it doesn't work out, I just know what the media is going to do to him. You mm. already know what the storylines are going to be and whatnot. Madge is obviously known for being a very hard trainer and whatnot. I can just... Just off, you know, a lot of the noise that was coming out into the Wales camp last year, that's the only thing that really worries me. Mm. But I, I, I think that, and I'm the biggest Brad Fittler fan in the world, I think that we need a transition to a different mindset, different mm. style of coaching. And Jeff Tuvey probably would have been my pick. But the more I think about Madge, the more I kind of like it. Mm. Do you mean? I like Madge, yeah, especially after some of the names that were thrown up for the job over the past month or two. Um, I thought Guru was a bit stiff. Yeah, that know. felt personal. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, that felt very personal. <laughs> he was my first choice, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind him. He said hard nose. You know, we know he's got a hard edge, you know, infamous for it. He's a, 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 a NRL Premiership winning coach, plenty of runs on the board. You know, because he's got that hard edge, it sounds like he can't do too long a stint at clubs because he mm. just runs people into the ground and, and he's a lot to play <coughs> under. State of origin, three games, get them up, short, sharp camps. I think he's perfect. Uh, mm. like, don't get me wrong, I'm not... Like, there were some okay options out there, but I think he can come in and do a job. He's passionate. I think he can get the boys up. I, I don't mind, Madge. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just worried that... Look, I, with the options that they had, I don't think it's a bad... Look, it's not a bad choice for sure. Not at all. He's got runs on the board. He's won comps. Done okay with New Zealand. So he's, you know, done the week-to-week coaching recently. I guess my concern is is that everyone, anytime you ask him about Magic, he's got a hard edge. He's hard edge. You know, he's super hard edge and it's going to make him tough. And I just mm. think that, I think you need more than toughness in origin. I think that's almost a given. Like, these boys are tough. They're the best of the best. And I think that when you look at the way Queensland won, it was with this really precise game plan that they implemented, you know, the last couple of years. But that's and where the assistant coaches are coming in. Yeah. He, he's, he's not there to ride 100% of the game plan. That's where the assistants come in. So I look at that and I go, all right, well, you look at the Tigers. And even though I think history will be kind to Maguire at the Tigers because look how they're going now. And he, I actually think that Maguire with this Tiger squad, they currently have probably fights for the eight. But I just wonder, like, I haven't really seen Madge have success in the modern era of rugby league game plan wise. And he's had plenty of opportunity to, to get assistance around him and, and do all that. And so I get what I will say is this, is that I definitely think Madge can get the boys up to win a single series. But outside looking in, it's a one year deal to my understanding. So it's actually not Madge is my concern. My concern is, is like, what's the long-term plan here? Is it smash and grab and let's just get a win and fucking after that we'll just see what happens mm. that's what it seems like from the outside looking in whereas i feel like if you're gonna go with madge give him a two-year deal at the least allow him to go make some sweeping changes like for example because it's a one-year deal when he's in selections is he just fully focused on a win right right now or is he, is he weighing up like you could tell there was certain selections where billy slater was going yeah for sure i want to win now but he's also weighing up instilling certain things that he wants for the next few years and I, that's the only concern i have with this the whole thing that's gone down is a is the toughness hard edge is that you know is that going to make a difference in origin level and also be higher above madge i think they should have given him a, a longer term deal what do you reckon Hammy? yeah I, was, I wonder whether there's just enough kind of like as a player going in there um, is there enough of a wow factor? I think you guys have spoken a bit about it before. When you're a Queenslander and you get in there, mm. you got uh, Slater, Thurston, Smith. They're all in the rooms. They're all getting around it with Billy, obviously, leading the charge. I feel like you need a bit of a figurehead, someone you just go, well, I can't believe this guy's coaching me. There's not a lot of those for New South Wales probably in, the recent, in their recent history. Maybe Boyd Corden has won, but probably not ready to coach yet. Yeah. I just wonder whether that – I don't know. Do you walk through the, the door? And, yes, he's been a great coach, won a comp with Souths and whatever – Recently at the Tigers maybe didn't go, go as well, but I don't know that there's enough. I mean, who else would they have picked really is, is the, the tough thing, but 
I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that it's a solution. And this is the big thing for me. And you know, can be you, you just spoke about. You know, is the tough angle enough to do it? Yeah. You know, when you compare to Slater, I'd probably say no, it's not. Mm. But we don't have a fucking Slater. Yeah. You've got four of them. Mm. You got four guys you could pick. I, I just said an hour ago that you know, we're, we're still reeling from Joey and Freddie retiring. Like they're our Slaters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all your potential Slaters have got great gigs in the media. Why would you want to give it all up to go and? Coaching yeah, and just get roasted kittled. if it yeah. Yeah. if it goes wrong, you know. Um, but, but even so, like you talk about you know wow factor and all that sort of thing, and you, I understand wanting wanting the wow factor as the figurehead and being the head coach and all that. I, I do understand it, but for if your player in there and manages your head coach and you've got someone like Joey Johns coming in as assistant or helping out or doing bits and pieces here, like it doesn't have to be the head coach doing that and getting the boys up for a game of football. Do you think Joey and those boys will come in though? I don't know. Of, I don't know. Like Madge's relationships with certain people. You know, there's chat of Ivan Cleary coming in and doing a bit. There are a few whispers of, I don't know obviously when Freddie was still there, Gus Gould saying if he gets the call, he'll come mm. in and help. But I don't know who's going to end up there. I think there, the, the Ivan Cleary one hinged. Oh, look, this is pure speculation. Mm. I just know Ivan and Brad Fittler are friends. Yeah. So I think that was more along the lines of I'm coming in to help my mate and the state. I just, it seemed like that current crop of coaches were there for each other and the state, and that's why they were in camp. So I don't know whether those guys, boys will be going back in almost out of respect for Freddie to a degree. Mm. I, I don't know. I, again, pure speculation. I don't know. If so, that's fucked. Yeah. It's a state of origin. We could you. <laughs> Could you see any of Billy Slater's mates pulling well, out of origin? But I think it's from from the players' perspective, like from Joey, Greg Alexander, Danny Badiris, they're like, mate, I'm not going back into that shit fight. Like, I was back in the yeah. shit fight with me, mate, in the trenches, because mm. Freddie's under the pump. I'm not fucking going back in and getting pizzled for, you know, eight weeks of the year again. Mm. You know, I think it's more of a personal... Oh, thing. I know what you mean. Pure speculation. Pure yeah. speculation, guys. Oh, it's not yeah. a good situation. Look, I, I'm fine with Madge. I'm fine with the game plan. I have enough faith that he can get the right people in in the system and other coaching roles to get the game plan right to beat Queensland. Mm. I do agree, Kempi, with the, the one term, uh, the one year contract. If, that, if it's one year deal, like... It's not even one year, it's five months, I think. Five, five, five you, months. What is it, Matty? Yeah, like oh, just, a, just a short term deal and, you know, win or die kind of thing. It's just in sport these days, that short term planning, you know, Madge just coming in, he'll, he'll probably... If he's there for three years or he's there for one year, his selections change. Yeah. 100% they change. Yeah. And that short-term thinking, I don't think it gets you very far. Well, I think as well, it's like, you, like if you go, let's say three-year deal, let's say New South Wales going, this is our fucking man. This is, then you're saying to everyone, this is the new direction. This is where yeah. we're going. The one-year deal, it's saying, we don't really know. Are you the best of the bad bunch? Yeah. Like, like, you're on year till someone else comes up. Like it it's a very – str- and it's not even one year. It's five yeah, months. five months. And so I, the worry I have for players going in is this subconscious like, is this a new direction? Mm. Is it not a new direction? You know, oh, I just don't know what New South Wales Rugby League are thinking with that. Why not just do a three-year deal with clauses in it saying we can get yeah. rid of you and pay you out yeah. know, 50 grand or something? I don't understand – like clearly – Michael Maguire agreed to a five-month part-time deal. So clearly he would, do, he would agree to um, a three-year deal with clauses in it, surely. Mm. Like, like, why wouldn't you? And also, like, and I think maybe there is a clause that if he wins, he, it goes another year or something. Could you just check? And if he doesn't, doesn't, it's like... Oh, if he wins, he's staying in. Yeah, of course he's staying. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, well... I would have loved if they were going this one year, let's see what happens kind of thing. All other commitments or whatever aside seeing Gus Gould have a crack at it for one year. Just yeah. just get in there. Just to be like Wayne Bennett did a few yeah. years ago in the COVID origin series, just came in, everyone's like, oh my God, come on, being coached by Wayne Bennett. Got that, you know, a um, bit more of a battler kind well, of He has like, that magic. Exactly. That magic you were talking about earlier where if Gus Gould's coming back in, you know, all the boys are fucking cheated up. This is our moment. This is our... Giving you one of those Churchillian pre-origin yeah. speeches like, like you used to do on the field. Yeah. Kemp, your best match with Gus now. Put a word oh. in. Yeah, have a chat. <laughs> oh, mate. G- Gus, come in, like... You know what? I'd love for him to be head coach, but even just to come in and be around the camp and it's help out. Camp. I would freaking yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think Michael McGuire's a bad decision at all. I, I think that... <laughs> He does offer quite a lot. Um, I, I, I'm a bit surprised that if he's going to keep his assistant in New Zealand coaching role, like, that's a lot. That's, that's a, like, could you, yeah, I mean. It, it is a can. lot. The only thing is, like, they were talking about giving it to Craig Bellamy or Ricky Shaw, like head NRL coaches who are essentially 12 months a year, mm. at least the internationals and Origin, they don't overlap at all. Like, yeah. I don't get me wrong, I, I'd love to get a 
full time 12 month year New Wales coach because there's so much to it yeah. but the two don't really overlap I, th- I think as well like the, the five month deal it's all the other stuff outside of coaching that Freddie was doing that's clearly not going to I'm assuming it's not going to be done anymore so it's like that all of that culture and connection to the New South Wales side that Freddie rebuilt when he came back in all you know outside of that six week period that he did Obviously, Michael Maguire is not going to do that because he's not even contracted for it. He's not even employed at that time. Is that going to hurt New South Wales long term in that connection to their state, their side? I don't know. There is still a lot of red flags, isn't there? Yeah, just and it, it, the red flags actually don't come from Michael Maguire. Mm. My concern is the broader thinking of, well, actually, we're going to reduce resources to New South Wales, not increase resources to the New South Wales head coaching. Um, and apologies if that's not the case, but I mean, I'm assuming if you're offering a five month deal to someone, you're putting in less resources than more. Yeah. I choose to avoid the red flags when it comes to the blues, just <laughs> stay optimistic and believe. Uh, yeah. Look, it's also like, like, I just think it's, it's part of the situation where like, I, I, what you guys just said about, oh, I feel good come in. He's got that wow factor. Does he have that wow factor for some of these guys? I think so. Cause I he's been in the media does. still. Yeah. yeah. Cause he's kept relevant. You know what I mean? For sure. What wows you about Gus, though, for us? It's, you know, when he was coaching the Blues. That was 20 years ago now, I remember. You know, it's been 15 years since he's done those origin things. Yeah, like, but you still, as Kemp said, because he's still relevant and in media, you still hear him speak week in, week out. And I sit there and go, fire, that's good insight. Jeez, and also, good like, insight. look what he did at Penrith. He's the head honcho at Bulldogs now. You know what I mean? Like, he still has pull, I reckon, <laughs> Gus. And because it's because he stayed in the media. I think he still has... The, the generation now coming through still see Gus as, like, just... Almost, I know Wayne has been head coaching this whole time, but he's probably the one guy that still has rele- relevance because mm. he stayed in the media, in my opinion. But maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I this generation. Be surprised. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So, oh man, it's going to be. I tell you what, though, maybe New South Wales rugby leagues are genius. Maybe they hire him five month deal. He wins it. They save a bunch of money, and they keep him on the deal. That's you know one mm. or two years long. And at the end of the day, if we have everyone fit. And we've got Turbo, we've got Latrell, we've got Nathan. If we've got everyone available. You should win. We should be able to at least match it with you. Like, surely. Surely should win with everyone fit. Um, so, yeah, as I said, New South Wales Rugby League. It, look, the, the, the ironic thing is that all that matters is the win. If they win, yeah. they look like geniuses. If they lose, we'll all sit here and say, we'll pick it apart. Um, I, I think at the very least, though, if you had a longer-term plan, if you lost, you could say, new beginnings, rebuilds, all that carry on. Whereas now there's like none of that. There's none of like new beginnings or anything because you're like, well, it's a one-year deal. It's not a new beginning. Mm. Uh, okay. New Zealand, uh, New Zealand okay. Uh, Alex Twell resigns with the Tigers after being reportedly told that he was not wanted. I'll get your yes. thoughts on <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it was interesting. This actually, I went and got my hair cut in Roselle uh, last week. And um, the next, uh, next customer after me was actually the coach, Benji Marshall. Oh, really? So uh, as I left... Held the door open for him. He said, gave me a little cheers, bro. I said, <laughs> make sure you re-sign Alex Twile. Oh, okay. Next morning, Twile re-signed. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't want to say I was responsible, but um, we've got him. And that is such a good signing, I think, because just someone who's like, that's what, which you need those guys oh, in your team. Mate. Who the, the fans get around. It's what we're all about. You know, every time he touches the ball, even if we're getting belted, the fans at Leichhardt, wherever we're playing, mm. get so up and about. I can't even believe we said you're free to shop, you know, shop around. Yeah, I thought you were going to just gloss over that bit. What are your thoughts on the fact that only a week ago you told him that he can leave? <laughs> I didn't personally tell him. I was, all, <laughs> I was advocating for him. I got the deal done. Can't be, don't, don't twist my words. Um, but I was very emotional. Had a, had a cry in the shower. I did all that sort of stuff. But we've got him now. Um, yeah, I was I was spewing that we were gonna, we're even considering letting this guy go. So great to have him back on board. Very excited. Not a lot to be excited about as a Tigers fan of recent times. So getting him back on board, I was very happy, man. Yeah, great yeah. signing. Look, there, there's a yarn going around that, you know, oh, well, they got him for for less. He signed on less money. I don't, look, I don't believe that. So, oh, anyway, I, I think that that is things getting leaked to try and justify what's happened. Mm-hmm. You don't tell a bloke, we want you gone, and then re-sign him for three more years as a negotiation tactic. Like, that's craziness. That's craziness. What are your thoughts on the whole situation? No, if it's going to happen anyway, though, Kempi. <laughs> we'll play Don't chicken. We'll play chicken with the heart and soul of our squad. Let's do it. 
No, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's great to see him stay there. Uh, you can probably talk more, Kemby, but I, I met him for a brief five legend. minutes at one of your photo shoots. Like, like he is as good a bloke as you expect. Fucking absolute legend. Yeah. Legend Absolute of legend of a bloke. Um, and like, so reports where he's on around 500k uh, currently, that's decent for a front row forward that is of NRL standard mm. and consistent and durable. Like, th- like people think that, oh, because they see their 500k, they go, holy shit, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but relatively speaking to such an important position in today's cap, cap, like that's that's decent. Like it's not... It's not crazy overs or, or whatever. I think I think people were surprised. Like there, there were some front rowers last year that were on a million dollars a year mm-hmm. that you'd be surprised they're on a million dollars a year. And I mean, if it wasn't 12 that was lining up in that Tigers jersey, it's another player that you're not sure if they're going to do their job every yeah. week. 12, you know what you're going to get. 100%. It's not going to be 9 out of 10, but you know you're going to get 7, and it's gonna, you're going to get that every single week. Every single week. Uh, I, I think it's reading between the lines – I do think it's a good show, like a, a sign that Benji may have some pull there because I don't see how they go from – obviously, it's bad that they said 12 leap. That's stupid. But it seems like Benji's gone, hang on a second. No, I don't want Alex 12 leaving. I want him as part of our squad because there's no way Benji was in on the, mate, you can go talk to someone else, and then he did a roundabout. And there's also no way that Benji said, oh, no, I'm not interested in you. And then the club just re-signed him anyway. It seems like in negotiations, the higher-ups have said, okay, well, we're not going to do that. See you later. And then Benji's come in and said, no, no, he's a part of my squad. What do you reckon, boys? Yeah, first and foremost, I'm stoked that he's staying at the Tigers. It's such an integral part of their club for a long time now. And hopefully they do get a bit more success in coming years and he's a big part of that. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in the flow and effects off the back of it. Like, like if we say Alex Twole's a starting lock, which he'd been doing, or even starting prop, between Papali'i, Bateman, Uta Kamanu, Clemar, like the pack is so locked in. So just wonder what's going to happen w- with guys like Fanua Bole, uh, Matamua. They've got some exciting young forwards, the Tigers, and if any of them boys sit back and go, no, no, I'm a starting NRL player, and if mm. it presents opportunity elsewhere. So, yeah, happy for happy for him, but uh, Sean Bloor's another one. Mm. There's a few players there waiting in the wings, so we'll see. Yeah, well, I think that – I personally think they've just re-signed him as one of their ro- front row rotations. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm looking at that club and I'm like, who else? Like front row rotation. You've got Clemmer, who's towards the end of his career. You've got Stefano and him, really. Yeah. The Bolo, mainstay. Yeah, the mainstays. Well, yeah. Bolo's been playing 13, <coughs> though, hasn't he? Yeah. I, I think Matt Amour will end up in the 13, yeah. actually, and then Bolo will be in that rotation. But, yeah. Um, like, I think even Alex Seafarth was in, in a bit of that rotation towards the back end yeah. of the season. So, yeah. I think he just re-signed, too, didn't he, Seafarth? Yeah. Over. Did you add, I sort of was reading an article on 12 there, and A-Lick, I don't know if you said it before, but it re-signed with the Titans. Yep. Yeah. For one season. Yeah. Uh, also, Colin Matungi re-signs with the Rabbitohs. Uh, really good re-signing here. I personally didn't believe the reports that he was looking anywhere else. I think he loves the club and wants to be there long term. Yeah, he's a mascot junior through and through. I never thought he was leaving, so a good get by South Sydney. Yeah. That, they needed it as well. Oh, they needed like, it. Like, they were... Particularly, Mr. He- uh, did he miss a few games this year? But like, they were short and edge back row, and there was talk of you know, Cam Murray going out there, Jai Arrow, who sort of certainly played plenty there. But they needed to lock down one of their key edges because it was at times when injuries struck a weak point for them. So a massive re-signing. I think um, needs to be a huge off season for Keon though. I thought he had a really quiet back end of the year last year after yep. such a good Origin performance. Really got to go away, enjoy his break, but he's got to come back and rip in. I don't. They can't afford to, as a club, have a guy like Colin Matungi not continue his incredible form that he had at the start of last year. Do we know what he got, got off it? No, I'm not sure. Do you know, Matty? Not sure. Um, but he is so crucial to their attack. Like, ironically, it's, it's almost one of the unsung parts of their attack that doesn't get spoken about. He started struggling for form at the back end of the year and so did the, um, so did the yeah. Rabbitohs. If you go back and look when Cowboys are dominant, Keon's usually there around the ball in some capacity when they're going really well. So great re-signing. Warriors have reportedly told Josh Curran permission to leave two Sydney clubs after his signature. I never understand what on earth is going on with Josh Curran. <coughs> yeah. I think he's such a good yeah. player. Uh, it, it, from what I've seen of him and the Warriors, it's almost like it's a personality clash. Mm. I just I can't find any other reason why he isn't in this side more. And I think he would be a great signing for so many teams out there as an edge back yeah. row. Yeah, we were always surprised when he did get kind of pushed out of that starting side and then sometimes even out of the 17. It just, yeah, it seems like that he 
I mean, clearly the Warriors have basically said it, that he doesn't fit into their plan going forward. It may be, sometimes a lot of this can do not with personality, but the size of the contract. Mm. Because you've got to remember when he re-signed, he re-signed as their big dog. Because he was their biggest player. Like, yep. He was their star. Well, he was the first one. Like he, he went over there during COVID and he was the first one to recommit and say, I want to stay here. Yeah, and, and it was he was their best player essentially at the time. So the Warriors might be going, look, we've got a starting side where you're not in it. You're on the bench. You're on a big wicket, let's say, I don't know, 500K. We can't afford to have a 500K player that isn't a fronty on the bench that, you know, Sometimes makes our 17. I mean, eventually, it was only a little period where he wasn't in their 17, wasn't it? Wasn't that No, long? he's been in and out for a while. Of, that's Rick's my recollection. so weird yeah. for, for a couple of years now. And obviously, they've got Ford and Nia Kore, who are now so they're going there, the starting back row. So that's the way they've gone. Can't, I'm with you, Guru. I don't... It's just been a weird few years for him because every time he plays and every time he starts, he does a job, give or take a minor defensive lap through there. In attack, he's unbelievable. He's going to be, and no, he can't be because he's not in the starting plans for them, evidently. He's going, well, I am a starting back row and I can command that 500k or whatever it is. So he's going to be a great pickup for a number of clubs. You're Jeez. right. He started in, he played in 20 games this year. So he did play quite a bit of footage, to be fair, but he started in four or five of them. So he only played 20 games this year? Yeah, 20 games this season. Uh, and then the year before, he played 18. He was, he was at 13 for a while there, wasn't he? He's you can play both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very, well, also very good in the middle. One of yeah. my boys are one of the clubs that are talking to him. I know I've had the checkbook out today, signing everybody, but um, <laughs> but he's another. I don't know. He I just, wouldn't mind him at the Tigers at thirteen. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's got he's got that uh, twelve sort of thing about him. He's just like the boys get around him. He's got the headgear on. You know what I mean. Gets the gets the people going. Give him a million bucks, eh? Hey? Well, I wouldn't put it past us. <laughs> <laughs> Great haircut. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I personally – because, like, we know he's committed. I mean, he dislocated his finger trying to save a try. Uh, I think it was against Newcastle. Mm. So he's committed. I, If I'm to guess, he re-signed when they, you know, were really struggling and he was their main guy. And they're probably – Warriors are probably sitting there going, look, a guy that on the bench comes on sometimes and probably not in our plans in the future, we'd rather you and go and get another deal somewhere else than basically stick in reserve grade or – you know. Not that I need to tell you, Kempi, but if he does sign somewhere else and turns into an 80 minute back row, a very good super coach cat. Oh, really? I'm sure you already knew that. I could have told you that, mate. <laughs> could have told you that. <laughs> where, uh, where, do, where do we see him lobbing, boys? Where, who could use him? Cronulla Sharks be one on the edge? Yeah. Good that's, a great, yeah. that's a great shout. Surely the Sharks have got money. Oh, honestly, Tigers are 13. I don't mind it. Um, it just depends because of his value. You know, like it depends how much yeah. he's going to be asking. Because at the moment, he's essentially a bench player at a top four side. Um, Give or take how, how high the, their prospects are for Dylan Lucas, but the Knights, that fits given that left edge spot. I reckon that Knights left edge or South Sydney left edge would be a really South good Sydney landing spot. need an yeah, edge. Don't mind Rabbitohs. Don't mind the Rabbitohs. Yeah. It's going to be, yeah. Because he's too good not to be playing. Mm. Yeah. You know, decent minutes each week. He's a bloody good player. Uh, Titans have lost their partnership with Kibra High to the Rabbitohs on a three-year deal. That's a massive loss. Huge. Kibra High is arguably, well, not arguably, what, top three rugby league schools in the country? Yeah, they're unbelievable. Like, top two? And have been for a long time. Very long. I mean, they fucking Benji come through Kibra Park. Well, I think that that's Haas, Fafida, Reese Walsh, just to name a few of recent, yeah. P Piacora? Piacora, yeah. Like, guns. Yeah, I don't understand. I've read it into enough like the, the politics behind all and what's happening, the money thrown around, but just a Sydney club linking with Kibra so did not see that coming. Didn't see it coming. Now, my understanding was, I think, can you get the report up? I think Kibra said you've got to lose connections with all those other schools and Titan said, nah. I think that was the report out. I think that was the report out. Um, and so, look, I, I guess I can, like, I don't, like with Kibra, I'm not really, is it because Kibra was sitting here, we're developing all these players and some of them aren't getting contracts and that's why we're going, why are we developing all these players for a club that's not giving mm. them contracts? No because, idea. Because Titans are getting them from PBC and that? So Kibra wanted to be exclusive with Titans, yeah. so they want, but Titans didn't want to cut off their other schools. Okay. So I guess you can understand where Titans are coming from, mm. but it's a big loss. Well, you have a look. Uh, I'll just have a look at some players that have come from there. Fafita, Fodawaka, AJ Brimson. 
Oof. Shit. <laughs> Pretty well their three best players. Mate, great for Rabbitohs. Really good for Rabbitohs. Massive for Like Rabbitohs. getting that connection to Kiba Park on a three-year deal. Yeah. Fuck, that's good. Jesus. Get some Queensland blood down there, eh? Along with grand final hero Jesse Arthurs. Ah, mm. okay. Um, Storm have activated their club option for Sua for a long old for 25. Mate, that'd be free. I mean, I know they don't have to, so don't worry about it. And he's he's shown that he wants to stay, but, geez, I'd be looking to lock him in earlier. Because if they give him a crack this year and he plays 10 good games, all of a sudden a 500K deal turns into a fucking 800, 900K deal in this new salary cap. We know how good he's going to be. I mean, I would be strongly looking at just locking him past, at least past... Because if he, this next year coming, if he plays 10 good games, he's available to negotiate November 1st. So I would be looking to at least lock him past to 26, just to get that first year out of your belt so you know you're where safe. he stands, that you're yeah. safe. Whereas the not safe thing for Storm right now is if he comes out and plays 10 hectic games, it's honestly like he's so electric, he could get 800 to $900,000 from a desperate club that's desperate for a fullback. If I was a desperate club, he's the sort of player I would punt on paying Massively, 800. massively. Ooh. Where's he slotting in the next two years with Pappenhausen? We, we, obviously 14's an option. He's he's pretty small in terms yeah. of if they were gonna play him in the front line on the wing, like defensively, try and tackle some of them big boys. I, I don't know if he could do it, but I would suggest probably not. Maybe well, just slot him in at 14 next year. Yeah, well, I look, obviously Pappenhausen's in front of him. We've seen Pappenhausen yeah. do it on the biggest stage. But I, and so that's Pappy's jersey to lose. But I do think that heading into this year, it's his to lose. Whereas I think if it, if it was a year earlier, it was like, no, no, he has to play like 10 bad NRL games like Pappy does, or 50, and then eventually we'll give you a crack. <coughs> Whereas I do feel that if Pappy struggles for form in the trial matches, struggles for form round one, round two, round three, round four, they start going, look, maybe we give Fata Long a shot. Um, because, that, I mean, that's just the nature of rugby league, even though I hate saying that because Pappenhausen... Look, to be fair, I believe Pappenhausen will come back and kill it, but that's just the nature of rugby league, really. Like, I mean, Scott Drinkwater had to go to another club, yeah. the Cowboys. Scott Drinkwater. They got good form yeah. bringing guys like him, this, like uh, Falun got in on the bench, Hines, Pappenhausen. They all started there and then mm. worked their way kind of in. So yeah. they kind of just... Put him on the bench and find a way to make it work. Nico, really. Nico did it off the bench. A bit bigger body in that. Yeah, yeah. Style, he's played a bit of bench too. The big difference is, though, during that entire period, they either had Cameron Smith, yeah. who was an 80 minute hooker, week in, week out, or they had Brandon and Harry Grant. I yeah, think Brandon yeah. Smith could play middle or long. Like, and we don't want Harry Grant playing. I don't think they can keep doing this to Harry Grant. Yeah, no, too much. Too so that's much. where it's going to be really difficult, point. I think. That's why I call him the rugby league guru. <laughs> well, call well, I call me the rugby league guy. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Uh, okay, some store shout outs. Maguire's Colmsley next to Colmsley Hotel. Heaps of stock of bloke on hand. Black Nugget Moranbar. Moranbar. Small town, huge thirst. Black Nugget Moranbar. Common ground sellers close to the University of Queensland. You uni students, get amongst it. Every black sheep bottle shop, beer, beer, and more beer. Every black sheep bottle shop. Uh, in Queensland, in Brisbane, I'm pretty sure, or around surrounding areas. Caxton Hotel and Bottle Shop, the home of rugby league. Get in there, Caxton. Now, time for some cricket chat. Hammy, speak to us. Speak to us, son. Is, it, is there a quick chance for the cricket chat? My back teeth are floating. Can we have a quick uh, quick toilet break? Yeah, of course <laughs> you can. <laughs> 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 Mate, you should have said earlier. You should have said earlier. <laughs> Absolutely. I've never heard that in my life. All righty. Yep. Time for a bit of cricket. Hammy, speak to us, mate. Thanks for that, boys. I needed that. Um, it was about to be wetter than the lobster's lounge room in here. So um, <laughs> glad we're able to have a quick reprieve there. But yeah. uh, hey, the cricket, the World Cup, um, we obviously play tonight, <laughs> but we've got to probably just take a moment first to just kind of laugh at England a little bit for losing to Afghanistan this morning by 69 runs. Um, this was the big ticket item uh, coming into the World Cup, Afghanistan being England are one of the favourites to win this thing. Yeah. Allegedly defending champions. We all know they didn't actually win the last World Cup. They mm. just tied it and made up a rule boundary count back. And they've claimed <laughs> that. They've carried on. But they got a nice uh, reality check today. So um, uh, got spun out of it. Mujib and Rashid Khan both got three poles. And uh, just hilarious. It's a really great way to wake up, start the week. They've gone down. They've lost. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just chuffed. I don't, I don't know how you boys are feeling about it. But... You, I just probably didn't see it coming. I did have them as probably one of my big three challenges to probably win win this World Cup, um, England. But 
yeah. Where does Afghanistan rank? Like, put it in footy terms. Uh, footy terms? The Tigers is... I was just saying the Tigers beat the Panthers, but they did. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it's very so similar. It probably is a good very, example. That's that, isn't a great, it? great enough. Yeah, mm. I was going to say they're probably not as bad as the Tigers, but um, <laughs> but like yeah. for example, the Tigers roster. Yep, is a good roster. Yep. So it's like, is it really? Is it more like a New South Wales Cup side beating Panthers? Or? Well, that, you know what? In fairness to them, they've actually got a couple of uh, good players. In okay, they side. do. Like okay. Khan, probably the best bowler in the world. Okay, he plays fair IPL, plays yep. big bash out here. Mujib as well. Um, he's ranked. Oh, usually very high, like a bit of a mystery spinner. And then they've got a couple of blokes who are just sort of guns for hire who play a bit of T20 stuff. Faruqi's um, a weapon. Yep. So they've got they, a decent squad up. They, they do. I, I reckon you're talking about like in a League World Cup where like an Ireland has three or four yep. NRL players and they beat a New Zealand maybe. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like yep. that, Drew. That's not bad. They've got, like, they got a good spine and they're pretty light on outside yeah. of that. Like Lebanon. Lebanon with the yeah, baby yeah. Mitchell Moses. In fact, that's a good, that is a good way. There of we go. It. See, I'm, I can offer something, boys. <laughs> I can offer something. So anyway, that's um, that's just great to see England losing. I think it's the moral of the story there. It's a great way to start. Fuck great, England. Great way to start. And then the Aussies play tonight. So we obviously haven't set the house on fire either with our first couple of games. We're yeah, zipping two. A time for man in the mirror stuff. That's you know, right. We put shit on England, but we've got to take some responsibility for our own actions. Correct, Kempi. And you uh, you analysed it perfectly the <laughs> other day. You kind of picked apart the tactics and, you know, yep. told Paddy we need to be hitting the stumps a little bit more. And look, <laughs> I think um, here's the thing in, the, in this World Cup, the format that we have, every team plays each other once. You can probably afford to lose. If you want to play semifinals in the top four, you can probably afford to lose to the other teams that will be there. If you start losing to other ones outside of that, that's when you're in strife. So we've lost to India and South Africa. Not the end of the world. I think they'll be there. The I think the, the South African loss from a casual perspective was just the way we lost. Yep. Rather than like, we, are, we definitely can get beaten by South Africa. Yep. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. And I think it, the, the big issue with our, our game so far has been our fielding has been dismal. You, like, that's a sign of a good team. Like, good, honest, it can really kind of elevate you to, from being an average team to being a challenge. I think if I'm looking at the, the best fielding teams, it may probably India yep. and um, New Zealand. Kind of a lot yeah. of people kind of weren't really looking at them coming in. They've Haven't they been good the last couple of years? Yeah. New Zealand, like, didn't they used to be substantially not at, like, below us? Yep. And then the last couple of years they've been quite strong? Yeah, so they've, they've played two World Cup finals in a row. 2015, yeah, wow. we, we beat him uh, when they started McCullum, and then he left, and they got robbed with a fake rule in the last World Cup. So, <laughs> so, but am I correct in saying that there was a period there where they were quite... Definitely. Yeah. They definitely okay. dropped off. And, look, there's probably some concerns when you... Some guys at the end of their careers now, Kane Williamson. Mm. Um, you know, they've got a couple of guys like that who are probably going to leave in the next few years. But can be they're, they're a second tier nation for a long time, and then they elevated to tier one status oh. along with the big dogs. Yeah, I like. See, there we go. We can always. There's always a way we can bring it back. Bring baby. it back to footy. Exactly. They've looked good. Kane Williams, though, uh, he's had a very tough time. Like IPL tripped on a boundary rope, was ruled out of the IPL. Just oh. just came back from injury in that second game against Bangladesh. First game back. 78 not out, cruising, taking a single, a, a throw comes in from the outfield, bounces up and breaks the finger oh in his top hand on his God. bat, just walks off, didn't, didn't sulk a bit like, he's just like the best You know player. what? He's the Pappenhausen of cricket. He, he <laughs> is. He there is. you go, there you go, it exactly. all comes together. <laughs> <Got> exactly. <laughs> now you get Speaking it. of New Zealand <laughs> cricket, with Hammy sitting in front of me, He's got a bit of a Dan Vittoria about him, doesn't Very he? Very Dan Vittoria. Yeah, real Dan Vittoria. I assume Vittori. you're probably referring to my subtle variations in pace and trajectory. Of my <laughs> <laughs> spinners there, Guru? Or uh, of course. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, look, there you go. Anyway, so we play tonight. We play Sri Lanka. We've we got to start winning some games. I don't think Sri Lanka are going to be at that point of the end uh, of the tournament. But it won't be a walk in the park. They've won three of their last four one days against us, um, Sri Lanka. Uh, and they can bat. They've made 300 plus in both of their first games. But their bowling is not great. That's going to help us because we haven't had anyone make any runs yet. So they've conceded 430 to South Africa and 350 to mm. Pakistan. So this could be a good opportunity for uh, some Aussie batters to, to play themselves back into a bit of form. Now, I know you're a bit of a cricket fan, Timmy. Uh, what, what have you made of how we've gone so far? Where do you see the, the issues? Mate, few issues, but you touched on it before. Our fielding's been like poultry. You're like... We were within one drop catch of being right in this tournament. That was against India. We yep. had them three for 14. Three of their top four got ducks. We dropped. Mitchy Marsh had a bit of a bit of a barry and put down Coley. Yeah. Would have had them four for 14 or something. Yeah. They end up running us down effortlessly. So Rahul, obviously, you got 90-odd. Coley went on to get late 80s. If that catch is taken, or we go on and win that game, we're one from one, even if we lose the second one, no pressure, but... 
don't get me wrong, the batting hasn't been there, the runs haven't been there, but our fielding, we've been the best fielding team in world cricket for about 30 years and the rest, yep. and it's just gone up shit creek. Absolutely. So, got to start winning tonight. Next games we've got Sri Lanka. Sweet. While we're on uh, diabolical catching. Oh, yeah? Got a question from a friend at Sportsbet, Hamish. He said, he asked you the question, does Hammy still have nightmares about his drop catch in the 2019 Marsh Cup? <laughs> Uh, and for the watchers, and if you're listening, I need you to go to YouTube because we've actually got uh, the YouTube's listening. We'll play it quickly here for us to view, but we'll also put it up on the screen. Uh, some very, very suspect field. My, my therapist has told me not to look at this footage. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hammy in the crowd. That's a fair start. That is, there's a crowd catch, it's gone down, but Marcus Harris won't be worried about He's that. dropped it. <laughs> Hammy's dropped it in the crowd. The He's dropped today. it. Lost it in the, in the light there. That <laughs> Jeez, that's disappointing, mate. Been very, good very, uh, times, very fucking... Over-pitching. Got a fair bit about you, audacious to be calling bad fielding to Australia when I was going back with the fly there, up a hill as now, well. I think a year later, yeah, a year later I'm he's glad, back. I'm glad you've touched on this. Oh, you're be yeah. to take catches in the crowd, Darren. There he is. <laughs> back. He's done it. Never give up on your dreams, kids. Get out there and uh, so yeah. If you weren't able to see, if you just listen to the podcast, I went to the Marsh Cup. We're all across the Marsh Cup. Couple yeah. of Marsh Cup fans. But make sure if you're listening, come to YouTube and watch it, please. Yeah, uh, we'll put it on the like on the YouTube version of Bloke The lesson's got to be, Hammy, that if you attend enough Marsh Cup games, you'll get a catch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I dropped one. A year later, I dealt with that for a year. It was relentlessly cyber bullied by my colleagues at Sportsbet, <laughs> and uh, I went back other end of the ground. Um, and uh, ended up hanging on to one. So just ha- just stick it, whatever it is in life, whether you want to take a catch at the Marsh Cup or change the world, whatever it is, just uh, hang in there and you can achieve your dream. Are you going to show that to your son or daughter if you eventually have them? I won't show them the first one. I'm just going to go with this. You actually, no, teach them a lesson. I should actually. About persistence. I will. Yeah, I will. It's inspiring. I reckon they should Are make it. Are you going to show your You know your what? Son? Sports bet should make a mini documentary about that. I agree. Anyone Have some talking cool. heads about what happened in the year, the cyberbullying, maybe put up some screenshots of the cyberbullying. Yep, that, yeah, I've got plenty of those. Don't worry about it. Brought that. to you by a bloke and sports bet. I'm yeah. ready. I'm okay. ready. Okay. I'm willing to, to be a talking head on You're going to well. show Rain just to show him sort of a bit of a lesson in resilience what, and stuff Four like tries that. against Para? No, my catch. Oh, your <laughs> catch. sick of watching it already. <laughs> We're talking about me now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Abby, in all seriousness, yeah. what would be your career highlight so far? You've got the catch, you've got the mascot race. We'll get the mascot race up as well on the YouTube. Oh, jeez, the mascot race. So for the uneducated, well, which one? Because I actually won two. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> part-time gig at uni, I was the I was Woofer, the Western Bulldogs mascot, uh, 2012 <laughs> to 2014. Only mascot to go back-to-back and defend their title in the EJ Witten halftime mascot race. <laughs> No big deal, stop bringing it up. Um, I'd say probably number two would be the, the, the pick of those two, just to go and defend your title like that, you know. Everyone's coming for Could you. Could you come out of retirement, maybe? For the right price, everyone's got a price on that. <laughs> no, I'll throw another one in there. I heard a, a whisper pre-show from a one M Buxton. I hear you're a deal or no deal champion as well. Well, champion's a big world, but I did, uh, did have a win there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to dig some footage up of that as well. For our informed deal or no deal uh, viewer, listeners out there, yeah. what case did you draw? Uh, I drew, I reckon it was, it was either 12 or 21. What was in it? Not important, we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I took an early deal, cost myself a bit of money. Let's just put that <laughs> <laughs> Coward. Done that. Oh, done that. that's <laughs> the best. That's the best. Anyway, we'll back to the cricket talk. Okay. Uh, now, just quickly on yeah. So we're still in Australia, were we? We are, yeah. We're still in Australia. So as a casual fan, yep. I spoke about this on my last podcast. Yep. Langer, obviously known as a very hard taskmaster, yeah. correct? And the players do not master. like that. Yeah. yeah. And so my question to you is, we have had some success and yep. we and people, you know, like I know that we lost by substantial margin against South Africa and everyone wants to bring the no, the porch fix it, uh, porch, uh, pitchforks out, pitchforks yeah, pitch out forks, yeah. for Paddy Car- uh, Cummins, <laughs> yep. Paddy Carrigan, for Paddy Cummins. But my question is, is this a sign of these really kind of inconsistent, you know, we go really well, like for example, start of the Ashes, blew England off the park, by the end of it, we were lucky that we got rained out, draw, we, yep. we retained the Ashes. Is this a sign of uh, Paddy Cummins maybe leaning a little bit too heavily into player-friendly, not hard enough taskmaster, or do you think that, no, this is just, I guess, growth for the Australian side? Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I reckon there, there's a little bit of that. I don't know that we've got as much of a hard edge as we once did, mm. and I don't know that Paddy's a, sort of a super hard guy. Um, 
as well. There is a bit of Gen Z, Gen X, Gen X probably about this team. They're a little bit softer and more in touch with their, I don't know, their feelings. And, Which and can be like a that. good and a bad thing. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's not all negative. There's, there's some, for example, if you're always, if you're super hard edge, yep. it can make the playing environment bad yep. and shit and you don't want to be around you're not happy so you're not enjoying your sport therefore you're not playing well yep so there's positives and negatives on both that's right there's yeah. got to be a bit of a mix um look i like andrew mcdonald he's mm. the coach down there um and the players really love him as well he had good success at victoria and stuff like that and just like we're talking about with origin squads they've got the ability to just basically on a whim get whoever they want in to, you know mm. langer probably was pretty good at that because <clears> And maybe there's been a bit of a cooling off period from some of them but guys like ricky ponty and what have you like they'll, yeah. they'll get in there all the time and get them up and about but mm. um we're in an interesting period probably a few a few guys getting towards the end of their careers we've got a lot of guys playing test cricket one day cricket t20 and that maybe isn't the formula that's going to lead to success in all those different formats as well so it'll be interesting to see when a couple of these bowl, maybe the bowlers particularly and uh we've got obviously warner coming to the end when they go how we're going to structure these teams that might change a few things a little bit but we've only lost the first two games and, the, and we the, can still the, definitely and make it the other one throw in there can be they Australian subcontinent. Like we came into this as what second or third favourites or something, which yep. is all fine and well. India were pretty hot favourites. Australia have never been good on the subcontinent, no. like yeah, okay. comparatively. So it's not like you know we've gone to conditions that we've thrived in in the past and gone terribly. We've never been overly good on the subcontinent. India in particular, where we've struggled. So yeah, we've been underwhelming, but I think we we're probably overly fancy to go into the tournament. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we've okay. just got to basically the moral of the story is we've probably dropped two games. We can maybe afford to drop one more, mm. but we've got to be careful who that's to. So our next games, we've got Sri Lanka, Pakistan, then we've got the Netherlands, mm. then New Zealand. That's a big game. Uh, then we move into some of the minnows. We've got England. Um, then we've got um, <laughs> Afghanistan. Obviously, that they're in some good form. And Bangladesh. And they're both teams that... Afghanistan, I don't think we've lost to, but Bangladesh have done us a few times in one-day cricket. So that's a big... So game. just quickly, before we move on from this topic, yeah, is it a resounding... Not a resounding... Now that we've had some time, right or wrong call for Justin Langer to move on at the time? Have right we call. Yeah. proven that it's a right call? Yep. Was it, going, going nowhere. They, uh, they, they didn't want him. We just And things were about to implode if it didn't happen. So Yeah, yeah. okay. They were so, already kind of imploding when he was yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So what was, what, to my understanding, wasn't Langer becoming more willing to ease up a bit? He said... Said that a few times, but I believe. But it didn't seem, didn't seem like I it don't was. think it was showing through in his actions. And there's sort of little things you'd hear stories about blowing up at social media guys that were on tours with him and oh, really? losing his nana. Very <laughs> intense. And I don't think it was like that in that constant intensity, I don't think worked with some of these guys. Okay, so Paddy Cummins, um, I apologize, I forgot his name. I know he lost the captaincy because of a scandal. Um, Tim Payne. Tim Payne. Has Paddy Cummins, as of today, captaincy been a success? Yes. I think based on. The results, retaining the Ashes away, yep, tick, World Test Championship, tick. Um, yeah, there's probably, an in, like, I don't know, tactically, I probably prefer the way Tim Payne went about it. He can get a bit defensive, got very defensive, too many blokes on the boundary too early in the Ashes and what have you, but based on what he's won and what he's done, tick so far, mm. probably. I'm a, I'm a Paddy Cummins fan. I yep. think he's been great. Yep. I actually really like the way he handled the uh, Langer situation when he was very, you know, straight up, did the press conference. Basically, was pretty clear about what the issues were and what he felt. Like, I don't feel like he backed away from anything. Yeah. One area he was also very good was backing his players around all the best, so run out stuff. Yeah. It was a perfectly legitimate way to get out, by the way. Just stay in your crease, not rocket science. But, um, <laughs> and also, Besto did that to a player, got interviewed about it, and said stay in your crease, basically the same thing. Yeah, that's right. He, had a cra he tried to run one of our players out the day before, and eight years earlier in the county championship final, he, had, he did an even worse one where he just held onto the ball, yeah. waited for the player to walk out, and then whipped him off. Mate, sacrilege where I grew up. Exactly. Same here. Same here. You, you just don't do that in Canberra. You just can't. Um, so, yeah, look, we're still in it. We're still in it. Big game tonight, though. Uh, we're the dollar twenty favourites in that one. Sri Lanka are four bucks. Uh, now, I've got a little... There's actually... I've got prime real estate on the app here as well. I was just um, about to mention this. Top yeah. Number one. Hammies to score a 50 bingo. <laughs> prime real estate. Top markets. It's... it's Someone called Gavin Rubenstein. Is that prime real estate? Um, <laughs> or Simon, Simon Cohen, buyer's agent, because it's right there, straight below the head to head. So the way this one works, you're getting six bucks for it. There's five players listed there. Mm. If three of the five score a 50, that's bingo. So that's how this bet works okay. uh, for tonight's game. So the players we've got there are Dave Warner, 500 plus runs in the IPL. I just reckon he's got some runs in him at this tournament and this bowling attack particularly who have leaked a few. Big chance, surely. Steve Smith, Probably hasn't hit his straps yet, fair to say. Glenn Maxwell, not sure where he's at at the moment, but good friend of the grub, so hopefully he can get going. 
Kusal Mendes has got a, a century and an 80 so far. And uh, Asalanka there for Sri Lanka. He's got an 80 as well. So some guys in form for Sri Lanka and a couple of our guys who are just waiting for some runs against a, a bit of a pop gun bowling attack. So How did uh, Joel Sugarcane respond to you stealing his concept, mate? Yeah, um, sweating profusely is my mail. Joel at the moment. <laughs> Coming for him. He does it with the with the rugby league, of course. Sugar cane bingo. bingo uh, which people really get around. So we're up there for that one tonight. But anyway, that's our game tonight. I reckon we can turn it around. I reckon we can start winning. We're going to continue. Hey, yeah, how are you feeling? I'll back you, mate. Yeah. Guru? Can we turn it around tonight? Yeah, I'm going to back him in. A little trivia for you, Hammy. Yep. Cohen Handley, you just mentioned. Yep. Which former West Tigers player works for him? Tim Maltzen. Yeah, well done. That's the great Maltzy. Good at what he does. The great Maltzy. Safe as houses, literally, with Tim Maltzen and the team of Cohen Handler. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else did I have? Anything, anything else on cricket? Any t- or do you want to want to keep, keep moving on? Just a shout. I've got a, maybe a bit of a cricket could be anything for you, just to have a look at, if you're happy for me to... Yeah, yeah of course, mate. Trademarked by, by Guru. Uh, Jake Fraser McGurk. I don't know if you saw... I'm sure you would have seen this in the Marsh <laughs> Cup the other day. Down at Karen Rolt Noble, you might have been down there. Where you came yeah, no, no, I yeah. think I was there. I think I was there, mate. mate he's, anyway, he's, he's an open. He's moved from Victoria to South Australia. He uh, racked up 100 off 29 rocks. He hits 13 sixes. Absolutely wax him. Mm. Um, I think uh, change is good as a holiday for him. Big year coming for him. He's got a decision to make. He wants to play shield cricket, but I just reckon he would be a good show to just go all in on the T20 stuff. Just absolutely wax him. Um, he's one to watch. The other notable thing from state cricket also, in the we had a bit of a state of origin clash at North Sydney Oval the other day. New South Wales versus Queensland. And uh, it was a very, very a classic origin performance. Queensland won nine wickets down, put on 70 for the last wicket. And the two blokes batting at nine and 10 <coughs> were born in Sydney and Adelaide. So... Um, just reeks of origin um, written all over <laughs> it. It definitely so, does. That's cricket in a nutshell for the time being. Who's your, who's your tip to win the World Cup? My tip to win the World Cup, I think India are going to be very hard to beat at home, if I'm being honest, a bit of a, bit of a boring tip. But outside of that, um, New Zealand, I think, are really, really a team to watch. They've had a few guys step in. There's a guy who came in for Kane Williamson. They had, I think, 15 players in their squad, four were injured, so they all had to play. Rachin Ravindra is his name. Mm. Ca- came in, batted at three, scored a ton. He's got Indian heritage. And his name is Rachin because his parents' favourite cricketers were Rahul Dravid and Sachin Tandulkar. Oh, no him That's bad. So, that is great stuff. Um, I reckon they're my, my, my smoky. They're into about six bucks at the moment, but they're looking pretty good. Looking pretty well balanced. There you go. That's it. There's a cricket chat. Boys, any other cricket chat you want to talk about? Anything else? All good. Dad? All good? All right. Uh, Tim Zhu. Defeated Brian Mendoza uh, to retain the WO, WBO, WBO Super Welterweight title. He looks really good. Really, really good. Um, I think he was hoping for the finish in the 10th, but Brian Mendoza is no slouch. Uh, mate, he, look, Tim Zhu can't really do much more to prove that he is of international standard. He really cannot do much more. Now, can he beat guys like Charlo or Canelo or, or Crawford? That's yet to be determined. But is he on the level to go against them? I absolutely think so. Absolutely. So massive shout out, Tim Zoo. Did you guys boys get to a chance to watch the fight yesterday? Bought it. Watched mm. it at home. Um, I, I was on Tim to win by knockout. Mm. So there was shades of that, you know, that scene from The Simpsons where McBain's <laughs> sitting above Mendoza. Mendoza! <laughs> Mendoza! Because <laughs> he won on points. Um, but very impressive. Mm. Credit to Mendoza. Fuck, like he cops Half ass. Punishment. Mate, um, chin of granite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just hung in yeah, there. Yeah, have one of my curry puffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, mate, he's ready to roll, isn't he, Timmy? No one can get near him. 24 I mean, 0. The time is now. The yeah. time is now. Like, Charlo going to keep running from him? Hey? Charlo going to keep running from him? Oh, he's I, scared, mate. Look, I think Charlo, I think it's also about money for him. No, I think that's why he fought Canelo. It was just a huge yeah. payday. Because if you go and watch the Canelo fight, now look, there were rumours out that he'd broken his wrist or hurt his wrist or whatever. But he, a lot of people don't uh, realise in boxing, if you're a decent boxer, you can box to not get knocked out. Like, so you can just kind of be defensive the whole time. Um, and that's kind of what Charlo did. Like, he really didn't fight to win the fight. He, he, he never really... Risked it for the biscuit, if you want to put it that way. And and like sometimes you, if you're a bit casual watching boxing, you don't actually understand what's happening. But if you see a guy, you know, he's into round six, he's realised that shit. Like I don't have the power to knock this bloke out. He's a substantially better boxer than me. 
all right, I'm just going to be a purely defensive boxer for the next six rounds and hopefully not get knocked out. That's kind of like what Charlo did. He realised, look, I'm, I'm not going to be able to knock uh, Canelo out. He's a, he's a substantially better boxer than me. I'm just going to try and last it so I can say, I went, to when I went 12 rounds. Also, I didn't get knocked out. Plus, I get the payday. And so I wonder, the Tim Zhu, he's never really looked to be fully committed to it because it's a risk for one. Um, he... You know, Tim Zhu's big in Australia, but in, in America, is he as big of a name? Probably not. I mean, I think he's only got 200,000 followers on Instagram. That's obviously, guys, I understand that's not the only measure <laughs> of someone. But, I mean, for a worldwide boxer fighting for a world title, it's not huge. We're talking about guys like Charlo that are fighting Canelo Alvarez, who have who is like a, one of the biggest stars in the world. And so I wonder with Charlo is you've got to weigh up the risk – versus what you're gonna get paid. So for example, let's say someone else is gonna offer Charlo, for example, to Canelo. You're gonna earn $10 million. If you win, it's the greatest victory of all time. If you lose, it's like, it's Canelo Alvarez, who gives a shit. Whereas like Tim Zhu, I wonder whether it's okay, you get a million dollars, but if you lose, you're not expected to lose. You're supposed to be the massive favorite, plus you lose your belts, plus you're no longer the king of the division. So it's a lot to risk for maybe not as big of exposure as you would get otherwise, whereas a guy like Ter Terence Crawford, even though Crawford has come out and said, I'm not going to fight Charlo because he fought, basically, you know, didn't have a dig against Canelo. I think that may weigh into Charlo's decision-making because I do think Tim Zoo would give him trouble. I do think Tim Zoo would give him so trouble. So he won't fight Tim Zoo. I, that's, that, that's the thing. There's so many factors. I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope how, so. how does Tim Zhu get himself a seat at that table? Then who's he? Yeah, how's he going what's he going to do? What's the bridging? Well, the, like there can be mandatory challenges and all that kind of stuff where he has to defend his belt, but then Charlo might just vacate. Like it is prize fighting after all, so it just depends on. Again, is the payday worth the risk? Put it this way: if he was getting paid and the same exposure for Tim Zhu and uh, that he did against Canelo, I guarantee Charlo jumps straight in the ring. Surely Charlo v Zhu, Vegas weekend, NRL next year. Just line it all up. Oh the yeah, UFC, if you could line it all, all up. It. Oh, like put it this way: if Charlo was fair thinking about you know being the best boxer in the world, he'd be fighting Zhu. Yeah. Zhu is the man lined up, ready to take that fight. He's the next guy in line. But you know, just look. Floyd, even though I think Floyd is technically the best boxer in the history of mankind, like he's technically just such a pure boxer, he was really good at going, okay, what's the most money I can make against the opponent? Now, don't get me wrong, he still fought heaps of world champions, but he's really good at picking the right person at the right time. And I think Charlo, a lot of the American, well, some of the American boxers, not all of them, they're really good at picking the right person at the right time to earn the most money as they can. Um, it's kind of like NRL players. You'd go, okay, well, why doesn't Payne Haas take a massive pay cut and go and play for Penrith or Melbourne Storm and win comps? Well, you go, well, you know, I want to earn the big dog money at Broncos and have a risk versus reward kind of thing. Um, so I think it will happen. Uh, but I think if anything's standing in its way, it's just the fact it's a huge risk for Charlo mm. with not that much. Obviously, the reward is he completely, you know, gets the belts, blah, 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 but not as much reward as, say, a Terence Crawford or whatever. Yeah. Um, I hope they fight because Tim Zhu deserved it. He's the one. He stayed active. He's beaten everyone put in front of him. Brian Mendoza was easily his biggest test. He's not on the – Brian Mendoza is not on the level of Charlo, like, at all, but he's absolutely world-class and he's a dangerous opponent. Um, and Tim Zhu dominated most of the fights. Maybe lost, maybe one or I person like maybe three, four rounds. You could say he lost, but he didn't lose them by a substantial margin. He wasn't dominated. He wasn't completely outboxed. Um, just lost by a little bit. So yeah, I mean, there's not much more Tim Zhu can do. There's really not much more he can do. Shout out to Tim Zhu's uh, sister as well. Oh, oh, sorry. Shout out to Tim Zhu's sister, most vocal uh, <laughs> in the crowd there as well. A lot of passion. A lot of passion. A lot of pa most passionate person in the world in that moment, I reckon. Agree. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now it's time for some uh, community questions from the great Andy Raymond. Oi. If I go ahead and produce Bloke the movie, which actors should I get to play you lot? Guru, who's playing you? Who played Jabba the Hutt? <laughs> 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 no, I think Zach Gal Galifianakis is probably getting mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Guru. Oh. Spare yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy, who's playing? Uh, no, I think mine picks itself. Owen Wilson. Maddie, you can call it out. Who's playing you, mate? <coughs> I, don't, I don't really know celebrities. Squeak? <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's gone out with Squeak. <laughs> basketball? Is it basketball? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 
I mean, who's playing you in a movie, mate? Probably one of your big Hollywood hunks, like your Goslings or someone like that. <laughs> um, no, I've been told actually there's there's a, a bloke on um, Parks and Rec, uh, Adam Scott. It's a bit of a stretch, but wax some glasses and a thick beard on him and maybe we'll talk. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Have I missed anyone? Who would you cast as, as me? As you? Yeah. Fucking hell. Fucking put me on the spot, mate. <laughs> um, Dan Vittori. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know what his acting chops. I don't know if he could pull it off. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he could. I reckon yeah. he could. Yeah. Um, who would play me? Uh, everyone thinks the guy out of American Pie, but I actually think you know the guy out of the the pianist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the absolutely massive schnoz. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also in Peaky Blinders and that. I forgot his name. I'll get it up. You guys talk. I'll get it up. I'll get his name up. Guru, speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be a fucking content creator. Oh, I think speak. you would have to play yourself just quietly. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, wow, there's a bit of a more of a biopic sort of approach yeah. to it. Okay. There, there, there was a there was a good one thrown out. Adrian there. Brody. Adrian Brody. <laughs> there, there, there was a good one thrown out there on social media, and, and it was for Matty the Water Boy, the uh, the caddy off Happy Gilmore, <laughs> the little <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh, the young fella. <laughs> that is great. Um, you know who good player before he passed away? Steve Jobs. Jobsy. <laughs> With the glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turtleneck? <laughs> yeah. yeah no, I think no. you could make it work. I think you could make it work, yeah. bro. Fruit industry. <laughs> Oranges uh, or something. Ted Talk enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. I could see myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next question. Uh, given how good the uh, qualifying was between an NZ and Ireland in the viewing figures, crowd, etc., when will League get on board and realise internationals are the future and the way to grow the game rather than origin? I mean, we've. this is a topic that's... Real change of pace here. Yeah, yeah. A, it, uh, a question as old as time itself. Uh, look, it's a mixture of two things: is that a the game isn't big in a lot of countries, so you've got to create that first. You can't just pump a bunch of money in and hope it works. But um, yeah, like you don't want to be taken away from Origin to try to potentially build a world game when you've got such a big win already in Origin. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like. Like, oh, I think what's going on in the World Cup right now, Rugby Union has been incredible. That game between the All Blacks and Ireland was <coughs> unbelievable on the weekend. Mm. But, I mean, domestically, how's Rugby Union going? Yeah. Like, I know where I'd like – maybe it's just selfishly from my point of view, but I would just rather the NRL stay at – Yeah, I w- we'll right put it now. this way. Like, um, rugby, even in New Zealand, my understanding, is not – it's not, you know, flourishing. Mm. The, the super rugby sides, it's not like they're, you know – getting salary caps as big as, to my understanding, as big as the NRL on that. Look, I think that we absolutely have to grow the game. I, I don't know, there's word that, you know, maybe the NRL goes in and, you know, owns the international game or whatever. But I think that maybe we need to look at the salary cap and when we make profit and ways to potentially put aside money to invest into the international game. But we're just not there as a game yet. I think that the first priority should be shoring up our finances like that AFL did by buying that huge stadium. Then once we get into that position, we can start looking at putting money into the international game. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I, I think, you know, for us, the NRL is this big world. It's everything for us. It's played on one shoreline at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, literally nothing like, to the rest of the world. Yeah. So this idea that we can just go out and, you know, make it an international game, we could spend a billion dollars and it might not even be a drop in the ocean to the world because they just don't care about the game yet. Yeah. So it's got to be slowly but surely. Um, Another question. Why do people accept Manly not playing well and finishing outside the eight when Turbo isn't playing, but Storm missed Paps pretty much the whole year, finished third, and it was disappointing? Uh, by contract, They're both contract for over a million. Well, Pappy definitely isn't on a million dollars. But um, look, I just think that's more of a standard that the Storm will set. But I will say, and I was actually having a discussion in my comments section of YouTube last week, and he was kind of frustrated that we were being too harsh on Manly and too forgiving on the Cowboys. Uh, and I kind of made the point that Manly have basically, you know, underachieved for a couple of years now, whereas the Cowboys played really well last year, came 10th this year. Plus, when you look at their squad, they've got a bunch of young Origin players coming through. So it looks like their future is really being set up. Whereas Manly, you look at their squad, not many Origin players. You've just got essentially two, if you don't count Tommy because he's injured, three, if you count Tommy, Jake Troy, which obviously is coming towards the end of his career, DC also coming towards the end of his career. And my point that I brought up in the comments section to this guy was, Jason Tamalolo only played, I think, five more games than Tommy did last year. We didn't hear a peep about the fact that Tamalolo was injured from anyone. But every time you speak about Manly, it's constantly like, oh, yeah, but Tommy's injured. Mm. 
And I just think that, like, they have to move past that as a club. What do you think, boys? Yeah, and they're, like, <clears throat> this is very different examples because when Pappenhausen doesn't play, they've got, you know, I shouldn't say the main example, but they've got Cameron Munster, Jerome Hughes, Harry Grant, superstars all around, whereas Manly don't have that. DC. It's, it's a very different um, con- comparison. And I was actually going to bring it up when we were talking about DC earlier in the show that, you know, all the chat is, and from ourselves included, that, you know, when Tommy's in, when Tommy's out, Manly, two different teams. But I do think we've got to sort of sit back and say, well, Daly Chair Evans, he's sitting there, who has been fit the whole time mm. and has been outstanding the whole time. So there's more to it than just Tom Draboyevich. But with the Pappenhausen example, it's very different. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. Um, but I, I do think that this, this immediate, oh, Tommy's out, it's mm. like, mate, it's been, what, yeah. five years now? Yeah. Like, it's, how long is that going to be? And unfortunately, it could be another five years for yeah. all we know. I, I just don't think as a Manly fan you should be accepting the last couple of years as, oh, yeah, but Tommy's been injured. Yeah. Like, it's got a – plenty of clubs have key players injured uh, and they just get on with it. They get on with it. And that's why I think Cowboys, even though Cowboys obviously didn't finish the year well, but you never heard about Jason Tamalolo. And Jason Tamalolo has been a key player and winning a premiership at the Cowboys. So his impact is substantial. It is substantial. I feel like, and hopefully, Touchwood, hopefully, he's all good next year, gets through it all, all good, Turbo. But um, very impressed with Cooler and how he kind of yeah. finished the year at fullback. And just well, maybe I'm a bit skewed because I was there in the flesh where he just smashed the Tigers, <laughs> uh, scored a couple of tries, one in the first minute, I think, as well. Um, but he seems like a gun. So next time it happens, they've tried a few guys to fill in at fullback, Garrick and a few others before, but I think there's like an actual plan now. And <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to have someone at fullback for the whole offseason. Like it's not non-negotiable. Like it just, it's just you cannot afford to have someone not ready to be slot straight into that fullback position without a full preseason under their belt at fullback. It'll be interesting to see how Kohler goes playing for um, Tonga yeah. this off season as well. Because I, I agree with you, mate. Those two games, he was incredible. But at the end of the day, it was against the, lower tier sides. Yeah, the mm. lower tier sides who, who essentially didn't get off the bus that day. I mean, imagine him with a full preseason <coughs> as fullback. For sure. But I think we've also got to remember that before Jersey Gate last year, Ruben Garrick had Manly as a top eight side without Turbo. Mm. And then it all fell to shit. Yeah. And I also, another response I, you know, to the comment, I was like, even when Tommy was playing, they were, I think they were at 12th yeah. the week before he got injured. Um, so it's like... That, that, that excuse, it's, it's just not real. Like, it, as a, if you're a professional athlete, yeah, for sure, you can go, okay, we we're missing these key players, but if any coach at Manly is waking up going, oh, damn, we don't have Tommy, it's like, why are you... It's, it's just... Anyway. Um, okay. If you put Matty Timmy and the bigger... Uh, Guru Chino? Guru Chino, okay. <laughs> in a pit against you, Denon, do you think you could beat them 3v1? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'd, mate, we'd, we'd hug it out. We wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't fight, mate. We'd hug it out and we'd work out a way to get out together. I'd probably start throwing them at Guru, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are the Titans expected to place on the ladder 2024 with Des coming in and what type of football do you think he will make them play next season? I'm excited. I, I, I think there's Smokies for the eight next year. I really do. I was just about to say there's about five teams in the bottom eight that I look at their squad and yeah. go, they should play finals for yeah. next Tigers year. one of them on... Mm. Mm. I mean, you could. <laughs> you could. You could, yeah. Who knows? Um, okay, a bit of a two-in-one question. Where does a Blake Taff play next year? And will Crichton be full back or centre? Not a dog supporter myself, just curious. Interesting. So Taff basically said he got told he'll be battling Critter for that fullback position at the Bulldogs. Um, look, I, I like that mindset, but I, I think that, you know, Critter's probably going to get it regardless of how he goes in the preseason trials. Uh, because, again, it's, it's a question of what's your replacement in a key position. Now, Taff is a, a really, really good player, but Critter is grand finalist. Like, I mean, we don't need to list off everything he's done. And I think that if the Bulldogs like anything, it's that superstar in a key position. And I think that Critter will probably win that position. But if Taff plays you know, as good as he can play and you can put Critter back in that centre position, that's a massive win for the Dogs. Yeah, I've had a few Bulldogs fans reach out to me and tell me they've heard that Critter will play centre. I'm not buying it. I no. think he just has to be at fullback for me. Yeah, I reckon Critter, they'll both, both obviously play, spend time at fullback throughout the preseason. I think Critter gets first crack at it. Mm. I think barring got, like being particularly poor at training in, in that role and uh, in the trials, which he won't be because it's Critter, 
he'll play the first, you know, they give him the first six to ten rounds and if it falls on its head, well, they bring Taffy in, happy days, but you've got to give credit the first crack. Yeah, I, just when you look at that spine, you can't, you need to have him there. Yeah. Like, you can't afford to have him sitting out at the centres when he can be a game breaker, we know that. And I just, I'm just surprised at the amount of people that are just, yeah, you can't play fullback. Like, we don't know that. Yeah, and like, even if it does fall flat in its face and it doesn't work out, surely the upside is worth the risk of having a crack at it. I mean, so if he does be. succeed there, we can change the whole club. Well, yeah, if he succeeds there, he's a superstar fullback. Yeah. He's got the ability to be literally a top-tier fullback. Mm. Um, okay, here's a good question for you, Guru. Rookie of the Year front runners in 2024. <laughs> mm, you've got interesting. In the, in, in the comment, <laughs> you've got Munro, Haworth, Leah Tua. <laughs> Very hard on the spot, Kempi. Uh, I am going to back... Do, do we reckon Latu Fano is here? Shot to start for the Tigers next year? So you got Caesar you got there Bud and Sullivan, Bud Sullivan. you got Caesar, do we think? No, I don't no? think so. Okay, good. Uh, Farlongo won't get into the I spot. think Munro is a very good shit. Can Munro still... Has he, has he yeah. made it games-wise? Yeah, he's still eligible. Okay, yeah, I think Munro is going to be hard to beat then. Sure. Is he in your round one side, Matty? Yeah, okay, we'll go time Munro. Chevy Stewart. Chevy... <laughs> Well, I'm joking. Yeah, he's actually very good. Chat. He'll be a starting fullback Blake Moser. round one. Blake Ooh. Moser. Mm. Uh, has there ever been a bigger one season improver than Hamisa? It's a good question. Mm. Once again, on the spot, very difficult, but it'd be hard to top. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could find seasons, but like to Colin, go from Colin Best. <laughs> one of the great turnarounds from the Dragons to the Raiders. He's went from one of the worst centers in the NRL to the Daly M Center of the Year, Bestie. Didn't he win? Was it best that won winger of the year as well, didn't he? I'm pretty sure it was centre of the year for the Raiders. Yeah, okay. Um, Might have been wing. Colin Best was Daly M centre of the year for the Raiders. Yeah. Wow. It's a good knock. Incredible. Winger. Because I think he, he rolled the great beak of that position. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you knew so much about Colin Best and yeah. his positioning. Ro absolutely robbed of that. <laughs> I think I, got, I was named as like a, one of the ones that could get it. And got then asked got robbed by, by Colin by Best. Colin Best. Strong feel that year. Never forgive him. Never forgive <laughs> him. Best. <laughs> Never forgive him. How dare you strong feel that year, Timmy? How dare you, sir? Um, did Brad Thorne eat the Did Brad Thorne eat the chook he ripped the head off on the army camp two thousand six? And did he cook it first? Um, well, he didn't. No, no, he ate it. He snapped the neck, threw that away, and then we plucked the chicken and then we cooked it in the um, the pans that they gave us. The it was crazy. It's crazy. Brad Thorne is one of the most underrated figures in rugby league he's, in world sport. He's ever, literally, statistically, you could argue he's the greatest athlete that this country has he ever was, yeah. He's like oh, proper well. SBW before mm, SBW. Yeah, and his resume may have it might have even yeah. been better. Um, I think ooh. in Union anyway, it was better from memory. Yeah, yeah. crazy. He was a, I remember, I've said this before, but one of my big memories of Brad Thorne was we in the gym. He like walked up by him. He's like, "You call that a man? I'll show you a man." And he was like, "Toss!" And he was like, "Fucking!" You could see his whole upper body above my head. That's how well, nearly his whole body. And I was like, "Damn, that's a big human being." He's like one of the most unique guys ever. That at the start of every year, he'd have to go, "Okay, so I want to be in the All Blacks forward pack or the Kangaroos." Oh, like, insane. What am I going to do this year? Insane. Um, yeah, back to the Hamiso one. Look, it's, it is one of the. If you ever book, if you disregarded all of Wayne's past and you just wanted a sign of a good coach, you could look at just Famiso's career and go, holy shit, look what Wayne got out of Famiso. Um, I think that's it for the questions, boys. Oh, how did Guru, Timmy and Maddie join the podcast? Well, Maddie, um, I used to do everything myself, edit, I can put everything together, pack it all down, blah, 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 taught myself on YouTube. Then I needed someone to do that for me because I needed to create more content. That's how Maddie became part of the podcast. I was scouting soccer in 2003. <laughs> Um, Came across the beach. <laughs> we needed a co-host and, and the Rue was already on my mind, but the Rue reached out and he said, mate, if you need someone, I'm here. And I said, I love the audacity. I love it. Um, and so that's how the Rue came on. And Timmy, I what, used to watch a bit of uh, uh, Rue's show. I like what he was about. And I said to the Rue, if Timmy's keen, come on. I haven't been able to get rid of him since. Yeah, yeah. he's here. I, I don't... Uh I don't give the group, the Rue much credit for, for too many things, but I think you give me a good plug to you, Kempi, so thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, if we keep collecting people, we'll fucking have 20 people in 20 years. Yeah. I'm very nervous at the end of the table since Tammy's rocked up, I'll be honest. <laughs> so you were one of our gurus podcasting could be anything, and you just went, we'll, we'll take him. Yeah, we'll take him. Yeah. Just one of the, yeah, yeah can't win them all. <laughs> premiership winning side come in just fucking, poor guru mm. who was building towards a premiership, just got his star players taken. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> and the great Hammy, well, the Hammy... The great Hammy came on board because we wanted to do face of music. Uh, we wanted to do something with face of music, and we wanted. I wanted a judge, so I was like, "Why don't you wear a referee's uniform and come on the show?" Yeah. And you were like, "Mate, if you want." And then that's how that happened. That's how that happened. Because initially we just did it ourselves, and mm -hmm. I was like, "You know, what's a good idea? We get a ref." And watching from afar, it was just carnage. It was just not working. So <laughs> yeah, there was, we weren't was, facing the music. You, you were not exactly. We took the words out of my mouth there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That is us done and dusted. Make sure to grab a case of bloke beer from your local, the beer of rugby league, the beer of Australian sport. Uh, and as usual, we'll all go fuck ourselves. Thank you. And good luck, Volk. <laughs> good luck, Volk. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.